Good night, everyone. Um, so tonight, uh, it's gonna be a short session. Welcome to the Music Buddies. We're gonna talk about one of the most iconic bands of all time, I think. I think we all think that. Um, the Smiths. Uh, so here in this session, we have a bunch of... We have a bunch of uh, people that have, that have come in to talk about them. First of all, we have Gabe. Uh, we have Hello. Mint. Hi. We have Soup. <laughs> we have Gary. <laughs> we have Gary. Racist. We have uh, Captain Cook. Hello. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk... And I'm your host, Zadie Clark Sprague. Uh, we're gonna talk all their main discar- their discography is not that far, we're not gonna touch on anything related to Morrissey. We can talk about Morrissey, but not Dirk, but not his discography. Racism. Uh, <laughs> racism, yeah. Uh, against the Chinese, but, uh... <laughs> uh against pretty much everybody, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh... Vegans, am I right? <laughs> we're gonna touch their, their main discography, and a couple of their compilations and their live album. So... Basically, the Smiths uh, are one of the most legendary bands from the United Kingdom. They formed on the uh, beginning of the 80s, uh, 1982. And they kept a strike, uh, a streak of releasing albums that are constantly considered hi of high praise. Uh, starting with 1984, where they released uh, their self-titled, The Smiths. Um, and I think The Smiths is one... Uh, of the best debuts of the 80s, to be completely honest. Word. It has a bunch of great really? tracks, and, and their jangle pop, indie pop kind of uh, unique style of their own was uh, really, really, really something that uh, differentiated them from a lot of bands of the era. Uh, they had, tra even in this album, they started having, well, like, a some of their greatest songs, like You've Got Everything Now, Pretty Girl in Mercs Graves, and Suffer, Light, Suffer Little Children, which I think it's a great closer. Over, so yeah, I think it. I think this album is... Uh, f from the start of their second proper studio album, I think this album is more of a collection of songs that go well together, but they're still arranged in a way that it feels like a complete listen, uh, instead of like songs that flow right into each other. Um, but yeah, I think it's a good debut. It has a. I don't have many problems against it. Mainly, my main problem is that it feels more like a collection of songs that are put into an album that don't flow quite as well together, but still have a nice listening experience overall. It has some great tracks, as I said. Suffer like Suffer Little Children might be my favorite one from this album. Uh, the Hand That Rocks the Cradle is also uh, a nice one. Both are like the closers of the respective sides. The Hand That Rocks the Cradle is uh, closer for side A, I think, and Suffer Little Children is the closer for side B. The closer of the entire record. Um, but yeah, I think it's a solid, solid experience. They would improve this formula, and for a lot of people, this is their favorite uh, Smiths album. However, it's a uh, the production in this album is, is where the, where the drums just stand out, all and all, and also the the guitars feel kind of laid down in the background. It's a sound that I kind of dig for for the most part, and they would improve on that on their later releases. But yeah. Uh, for, we're gonna go with the same uh, thought, thoughts as always. So, Captain Cook, what do you think of the the Smith subtitle? So, first of all, I want to talk about them in general. If there was any band I want to reunite, it would be them out of anybody, out of Pink Floyd, out of anybody. So I just wanted to say that before anything. Because Morrissey Live, his vocals are out of this world and Mar Live's instrumentation when he plays live is awesome. But they need each other to be who they were. That's just my view on that. So talking about this album, this is the first Smith album that I listened to. I listened to the four main ones in order. I listened to this album since probably for two weeks straight every day, more or less. When I started listening to this album, Miserable Lie was my favorite song. When it changed tempos drastically, like one minute in, and it started getting faster and faster and faster. 
I was in awe when I heard that. And then Morrissey's falsetto in that. I don't know what it is, but I always love falsetto when I hear it. This Charming Man, alongside with Heaven Knows I'm Miserable Now, were my first songs I've ever heard from the Smiths. And it's the reason I gave self-titled to listen. Mars Django guitar tone and the licks attracted me to this album and this song in a big way. Overall, I really love this album. I just don't come back to it as much as some others because I listened to it way too much in the beginning when I started getting into the Smiths. Some of my favorite songs on here are This Charming Man, Still Ill, Hand in Glove, and What Difference Does It Make? But yeah, that's my take on this album. I like it a lot. It's not my favorite, but it's up there. I think you can say that uh, they really had something with the tracks, uh, especially with, not, you mentioned Mr. Rely, and uh, yeah. But wasn't uh, This Charming Man kind of a bonus track feature on other editions of the or original album? Was it? I thought it was on the, no. all versions of the album. It was a non-album single originally. It was their second single. And then it was only included in the U.S. versions of the album. Oh. And then yeah. later later on, it now it's pretty much considered a, a part of the main album. But at the time, That's so it, was, crazy. it was only included on the u.s version so it's yeah hard to imagine this charming man not being a part of that album. Exactly. yeah honestly yeah so i like actually is now on the which album are you on oh uh, we're uh, on so sweat is here me. we're on the first album uh, okay uh i have to say that uh the version i have is the original one the um, one that came out in 1984 so it still it doesn't have the, this charming man i think i think that yeah it's considered to be a part of the album now but i i thought for the most part, it was like I, I believe it. It belongs on Hatful of Soul of Hollow better, to be completely honest. But I okay. understand. Yeah, I do prefer that version. We'll get to that, I guess. But yeah, uh, I really didn't know that. I really didn't know that it was included after it was like a bonus track on the other editions of the album. Uh, so Gary, Gary, what do you think of of uh the Smith self-titled? I mean, I'll, I mean, again, I'll just say right off the bat that I love this space. You know, Morrissey's an asshole now. It's obvious, but like back <laughs> in the day, they were fucking legends. Um, this is this is one of my favorite Smith albums. I think it's one of their strongest. Uh, even though I prefer I prefer a lot of the so of versions of songs on Half of Hollow. I'll just say that right off the bat as well. I think the the production is stronger on on those versions. But this is still a, you know a strong a strong statement of a first album. Just just from the cover art that would um. That, that style of cover that would come to characterize Smiths in the future, which is just um, some, it, it, just some image of a, of a person with a color filter over it. In this case, a shirtless man with a sort of bluish purplish filter over it. And you can't really see his face. You can just see his uh, stomach. Um, but yeah, they would, they would kind of repeat that motif for the rest of their album cover, which I, I really love. I, I love their, uh, I love that aesthetic for them. Um, in addition to that, the, the album itself is just, it, it Right off the bat, the band, you know, um, Johnny Mar John Johnny Mars like jangly guitars. Um, Morrissey has such such a like such a weird voice for indie. Like so many voices in indie are known for being apathetic in a way, but Morrissey just has this baroque, commanding voice, and it adds this, you know, it adds this this appeal, this kind of uh, this vibe to all of their songs. This almost kind of like. I you know I, I use the word but this this baroque vibe to a lot of their songs that that really brings them out and the songs themselves are you know just stone cold classic pop songs I, I fucking love um, I mean I I, I I I I still do think of um, this charming man as part of the album even though I guess it wasn't originally but you know still ill real around the fountain these are all you know those, I mean those are my favorite tracks but all these songs these are these are amazingly written pop songs and I I love this album. Yeah, that's, that's what I have to say. Yeah, I, I, I have to say that a lot of the versions of the tracks here, I do prefer them on Half of Hollow, to be completely honest. But yeah, uh, uh, I still think it's a great debut, as I said. Um, Soup, what do you think of uh, the Smith self titled? Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Um, I was, I don't enjoy it as much as the uh, like later albums. Especially the uh, final two, I think it'd be like 
just ranking the four series, I don't know, it'd probably be like third behind a well, yeah, in front of a meet is murder, but um, yeah, a lot of great tracks here. You have um, you have the opener, which honestly, all of um, the Smith's openers are just really fantastic, and then following up with uh, you got everything now, and then just really, really great flow. Um, my biggest gripe with it is that a lot of these tracks go on for too long. Um, I mean, as much as I like Real Around the Fountain, it, a six minute runtime for this kind of song is, is I don't want to say it feels unnecessary, but um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a bit overkill. And then, yeah, it's, uh, it's all I really have to say about it. So, really great, solid stuff. And definitely like a, a band with a really unique sound, really like, kind of coming to fruition that just hasn't hit um, its peak yet, per se, I guess. Yeah, that's about it. I haven't heard that critique before, that uh, the songs feel, like, too long. Uh, too, yeah. 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 It's only, it like, it's three or four track. tracks on here. Yeah. Huh. Well, that's a nice point of view that I've actually never heard before. But, yeah. Um, Mint, what do you think of this Mitzvah titled? Um, I think it's a really great album. Um, it definitely has its issues, but I think for the most part, it's fantastic. Um, I a lot of what I love about this album is that, for one, Johnny Marr's guitar playing. I think he's an absolutely brilliant guitar player. Um, he kind of has riffs that, like anybody else, it could kind of seem, especially on this album, kind of seem meandering and kind of boring. But the way he does it, it's like it's actually really effective. And I think that plays a lot into why I love him as a guitarist. I think Morrissey is an absolutely brilliant lyricist. Um, not even just his lyrics, but like the way he sings them, the, the emotion that he puts into it is just um really effective um to go more so track by track reel around the fountain i think is it's one of my favorite smith songs uh yeah baby absolutely brilliant song um really beautiful song and like i said like you know and one th critique i have about this album not really a critique because like i don't think it ruins it but Something I have to say is that this has pretty much the worst songwriting by them. And that every other album, these songs are fantastically structured. Like, they don't go on for too long. Or if they do, they have a purpose. Um, there's so many different changes going on with Johnny's guitar playing. Morrissey has a different melody for pretty much everything within the song. Here, it kind of feels like they're repeating themselves a lot. Reel Around the Fountain is pretty much the same notes being played over and over again, which, of course, I don't mind because they're brilliant, beautiful notes, but um, it's not that well-structured. Um, the Hand That Rocks the Cradle, um, it's a great track when I'm in the mood for it, but, like, God, I need a key change. I need chord changes. Like, that song, it's just the same chords being played over and over again, and it's cool when I'm in the mood for it, but it could be a lot more interesting. Uh, Suffer Little Children, I also really love, but again, that has the same issue. It's like, it's the same chord that's being played over and over. There's no real change to it. Uh, but I think this album does have some real highlights. Of course, you know, This Charming Man, brilliant song. Uh, I do genuinely think it's one of their best, even though it's, you know, a very popular one. I think it holds up to the popularity. Fantastic song. Uh, really stood out for indie at the time. The Smiths in general just really stood out and were very original voices. Them in England and R.E.M. in America really just created this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I like those. A lot of people talk about the similarities between Peter Buck's guitar playing and Johnny Marr's guitar playing. Uh, there is a difference. I hardly ever confuse each other for one another, but the similarities are definitely there. And it's kind of crazy that you have these two bands that were doing a sort of similar style of music, had a sort of similar effect within indie in their respective country, 
at the same time, and yet never really bumped into each other, never really paid any attention to the other. Like, they were just completely doing their own thing, which I think is very interesting. Uh, miserable Lie. Going back to the uh, Miserable Lie. Uh, I know a lot of people really hate that Morrissey falsetto at the end, which I get. It's definitely not good. Also, I'm going to say this has... Uh, some of Morrissey's worst singing, although I still really enjoy a lot of it for the most part. Uh, and it doesn't really bother me. Also, I love the beginning of that song. It sounds really beautiful, sounds like the rest of the album, but then it, I love the way it changes. But I just don't think um, execution wise, it's done the most effectively, but it's still a good song. Pretty Girls Make Graves, um, I think, is one of their more underrated songs. Uh, not, I don't see a lot of people really discussing it all too much, but I think the lyrics on that song are fantastic. It has some of the best songwriting on the album. Uh, that little coda at the end, you know, just Johnny Marr's guitar, just like playing those beautiful notes towards the end, I think is one of the best moments in their discography. Uh, fantastic. Um, Still Ill probably is my favorite song lyrically on this album. Actually, no, Separate Little Children is, but uh, Still Ill, fantastic song with some amazing lyrics. Uh, and although there are like a couple of songs besides that that I'm not too big on, the only other one I'd say is You've Got Everything Now. It's a good song, but like, there's nothing really all that special about it, in my opinion. But uh, besides that, man, fantastic album. I think it stands up as a really defining moment within British indie of the 80s. Really stands out amongst their discography. Um, and I think it is definitely an essential is a listen, but I do think that the following releases do improve upon it greatly, even though this is still really good stuff. Yeah. That's my thoughts on it. I, I actually knew, know a lot of people that just hate uh, Morrissey's falsettos or when he just gets trying to do something else with his voice. But uh, I think, but I think, I, I think he does I it in a good that, way. Uh, yeah, yeah. the falsetto on uh, What Difference Does It Make, I think is done much better than on Miserable Lie. Uh, yeah. I, I, uh, but we're, we're gonna get... I like the Hatful version better, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, we're gonna get to that. Um, so, Gabe, what do you think of the Smith self-titled? Alright, so we're getting into this already. So the Smiths... Self-titled, their first album, is my favorite Smiths album. Oh, is and it? Here, here it is, here it is, here it is. It's happened again. One of my favorite albums of all time. <laughs> no! Um, <laughs> yes. Um, I love this album. I think this is like their least... I don't know how to describe this. The thing that the kind of was flopping through my head as I was waiting for my turn was that this seems like their least... Um, "Quote unquote pop album, like it, like the whole the songs that go on a little bit longer. They don't really fit necessarily compared to the rest of their albums, which are definitely a lot better sequenced. I don't have a problem with the song lengths, but I just wanted to make that as a point. Um, I, I don't really agree with many of the critiques for this album, especially with you know how people don't like Mor Morrissey's falsettos on this album. I think they're great. Um, I think Minto said that the this was this didn't have." Like the best writing in their discography, like in their discography, it had some of the. Would you say some of the worst? I, I didn't catch that entirely, but um, yeah, I, I don't agree with that either. I think that every song in this album, just about, is like near perfect. I love this album to death. Um, it, it wasn't for a while. I think my favorite for a decent period of time was was the Queen is Dead, but I quickly came around on this album. Um, I want to say couple months after listening to them, I finally came around to this one. I was like, yeah, this is the one I like the most because it's not so much a a best 
album, it's just my favorite. This is probably the most personal album of theirs that I listened to, like for me. Um, another thing I kind of wanted to mention is that this is also maybe one of their most sexually enriched, I want to say, like Reel Around the Fountain, uh, Hand in Glove. You have songs like that that just kind of ooze Morrissey's sexuality, and that's kind of why I loved his lyricism on this album, is that it's uh, really the beginning of um, the, 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 the lyricism that the Smiths would become known for. And I know some people like say, oh, you know, The Queen is Dead has their best lyrics. I think it's this album has their best lyrics. Um, yeah, yeah, I forgot to mention, like, this is probably my, my favorite lyrics that like, end up here. Yeah, just really, really. It's like more personal. I think a lot more personal. Yeah, this is more like yeah, a Morrissey's really like a diary album than yeah. so much the Smiths writing pop songs, which I think I like more. That's just kind of why it appeals to me more. Uh, yeah, really around I, the I fountain. See the appeal of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, really around the fountain is incredible. It was the song that like really made me realize how much I loved the Smiths. Um, it's still one of my favorite Smith songs like top three and it's also one of my one of my favorite songs because it's just it, it makes me think of a lot of things you know personal things um musically i love it i know that they said it, or at soup said it goes on a little bit too long but i i love it i think it's i, I think it goes on just long enough you know it's really a, a beautiful song and i think that the length um is necessary you know uh, the, the last minute and a half, I want to say, of the song is so amazing. Like the 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 part basically where he starts with uh, "I dreamt about you last night, but I fell out of bed twice." I love that. That the rest of that song from that point on is That's just one of his best lyrics. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, Miserable lie is amazing, of course. Um, Pretty girls make graves. Of, you know, one another highlight for me. I think the only song on here that I'm not too terribly fond of is uh, "The Hand That Rocks the Cradle" because I I don't really remember it all that much. Like it's not one that I really listen to a ton when I'm listening to this album or any songs from this album, it's, uh, yeah, I honestly, I've only heard, I re-listened to this again recently and I realized, you know, I solidified my, my opinion on it, but that song, I'm still just kind of there on. It's not one that has really been ingrained into my head as many, as some of the other ones, such as, uh, hand in glove and what difference does it make, which, uh, provide, I think probably like my favorite one, two punch on the entire album. Um, of course, uh, this charming man, uh, on the American out version of the album, Tech I think it's all versions now. So uh, that's essential. I could not listen to this album without this charming man. That song I think really belongs here. Um, Suffer little children is also one of their best outros, and in my opinion, one of the best songs on the album as well. So, just to kind of sum up my thoughts on the Smiths, it's an incredible album. It's one of my favorites. Um, it, it's a little bit sad that it's. I don't know. For some people, I see it's kind of mixed compared to their other ones. Like, it, it, they think it's good, but it's not amazing. I think it's amazing, and I think some of their other albums are just kind of good. So, it's kind of an opposite thing there. But yeah, I love this album. I do think... Ah, um, oh God. I can't imagine. I actually imagine this album better. Uh, I, I think there will be only me, but better without the bonus tracks. I think it's more to the point. And I really prefer it without this charming man, and I prefer the, this charming man in Hatful. But um, we're gonna get to that. Uh, yeah, I I would say the the best lyrics for me from the Smiths are on "The Queen Is Dead," but this is more personal. That's what I, that's what I do mm-hmm. think. Um, I couldn't really get my thoughts like completely out there. It kind of came out in like a word soup. So I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I understand. You know, that that sounded like completely incoherent. It's just you know, yeah. That's all. Nah, don't worry. Sweat, what what do you think about the Smith self-titled? Um, this is a really uh <clears throat> sorry. This is a really solid record. Like it's um I've heard I, I fucked up because I knew this was coming last week, and I, I still have only heard this and Hatful, which, you know. We all got our problems sometimes, but yeah, this is a this is a very solid album. I think that the I would like to comment on the guitar tone. It's pretty fantastic. Like I don't know if it's really the guitar tone. It just sounds so calming. Like that's the like the best part for a a lot of Smiths tracks is how relaxing they really are. It's not it doesn't like even though their songs, at least for me, are, are fairly emotional, like it, you, it's it's easy to put them on and just uh, relax and 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 lay back, basically. At least for me, and this album exemplifies that. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to echo what I believe Minto said. Um, 
and that's that songwriting isn't really here. A lot of these songs drag on like a little bit too long. Um, it's been a while since I've heard this record, so I can't really tell you which song, but yeah, I think the bonus tracks really do fit. And this charming man version that's on this record, I think is my favorite Smith song that's ever that they've made. Like it's legitimately, it's, it's incredible really. And yeah, that's all I have to say. It's a really relaxing and solid record. Yeah, I I I I repeat, I had never heard the complaint that this album feels too long in some tracks. I really think yeah. they're most to the point. But yeah, um, so yeah, this was the Smith self-titled their debut, uh, 1984. After that, they would release a compilation that is considered I I consider it like a vital part of their discography and an album in and of itself. Uh, Hat full of hollow. I think this is. Yeah, this is their most well-known uh, compilation. And um, I have to say that the versions of the tracks that are on the Smith self-titled that are found on here are much better in many ways. I love, uh, I prefer the This Charming Man track here more than the original. Um, I also love uh, What Difference Does It Make? Uh, rendition i think this album even though it has more tracks it really has a lot of uh a better a better intent and a more and a more clean focus on what the what the album tries to make uh there there are a lot of great tracks in here i this is my second favorite the smith's project um i do think that uh there are some good tracks that i think they're overlooked uh like how soon is now it's a six-minute track that really, really dwells into what the band can do overall. Uh, uh, you've got everything now. Heaven knows how miserable I, I'm. Miserable now. It are also great, great tracks in, on this, on this, uh, on Hatful. Uh, I do think that there, there were no weak spots. The only complaint I have is that this is, it's the same problem that I have with the with the self-title that it feels like a bunch of songs put together that doesn't have kind of quite a flow to them they're just uh one track goes to another and so on so on but i don't think it's like things that bother me but overall i think hatful is it deserves all the love it gets i do think it's uh one of their best uh projects and it has some of my favorite tracks like this charming man the re i do love uh the rendition of what difference does it make better than the one that smiths uh, also the opener william it it was really nothing is uh really really good. Uh, Handsome Devil is also I think a classic of of theirs. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a great track, to be completely honest. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so Captain Cock, what do you think about um uh, about the wonderful Headful of Hollow? So this one, this isn't my most listened compilation. I didn't, so I'm not going to focus on this one as much. It mostly has the Peel sessions on here and other songs that are on Louder Than Bombs that I listen to more. But to start, I'm going to acknowledge How Soon Is Now first. Recently, I found out last year that that song was actually a B-side to William. It was really nothing. When I found that shit out, I was so shocked. I was like, how the... Because that song is their well most well-known song yeah, to the general fun. public at least not to maybe smith's fans but like a random person on the street probably knows that song and i just i couldn't believe that shit that just showed me like how good the smiths really are like every song they give it everything mm. so um there's one or two songs out of their whole discography i'm not really fond of but it's not on this album not yet so as far as the peel sessions go i do like them a good amount but i don't revisit them as much because i do actually prefer the studio album versions better but it's nice to see like the different variations and songs and how they actually could have been on the studio albums if they chose to play them like that a song that's on here and not on Louder Than Bombs is Handsome Devil. This song is a more simplistic song comparing other guitar licks that Morris plays in the discography, but sometimes less and more. And in this instance, it's proven to be quite true. Overall, 
with this album, I pick songs on here, but I don't listen to it fully often, at least not as often as other albums. Um, songs I'd like to mention on here are William, It Was Really Nothing, Heaven Knows I'm Miserable Now, Girl Afraid, Please Let Me Get What I Want. Those are some of my all-time favorite songs, but i rather talk on the talk about them when we go into Louder Than Bombs, because that's the album I listen to way more. But yeah, that's my overall take on this. Yeah, I think it's a great album, to be completely honest. Um, Gary, what do you think of uh, Head Full of Hollow? So, uh, aforementioned, um, I, I, there are a lot of versions of songs here from the Peel set that uh, versions of songs that were on the Smith self-titled, and I actually really do prefer the versions here, the Peel Session versions. Like, I, I, I think Captain Cook, it was you who said that the Smiths are, were amazing live, and, you know, John Peel Sessions kind of captured a band in that environment, so having 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 their early, having these early songs in that context is, is really great. Um, this actually has my favorite Smith song, or my two favorite Smith songs. Um, uh, William is Really Nothing, and Heaven knows I'm miserable now. I, I think those are both also on Louder Than Bombs, but I, I kind of pref- I mean, yeah. I've always listen to them on this. Um, yeah, this is my favorite Smiths album. Like, it, you know, if I had to bring one Smith CD with, I would I would bring this one. Um, Morrissey's lyricism on, I mean, this is, this is kind of from the same era, but Morrissey's lyricism on here is uh, as amazing as ever. I, I love Heaven knows I'm miserable now. Just the, you know, what it, it's, it's 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 the song is so sour and sarcastic and in such a perfect way, and the way he delivers it is is awesome too. I, I just I just love that song so much. Um, I I was how soon is now on here? Let me look at the track list. Yes, it is. Um, I you know I, I that song is important, like in terms of its influence. It was because of the the noisy guitars or whatever, and it was kind of this influence on shoegaze. And I mean, I definitely, you know, you have to acknowledge that. But as a song, I, I, I don't really find it all that special. I don't know. And their discography, I, I, it's not one of my favorite. That's kind of my hot take about the band. But yeah, there's so many. This is my favorite Smiths album. That's 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 it. <laughs> it's it's your favorite Smiths album, huh? Yeah. yeah, I hear I hear that a lot. I think it's their second it's their second highest rated uh, on radio music. Um, but yeah, Mint, what do you think of Headful of Hollow? This is my second favorite Smiths release, and I think it. I had a sort of rocky journey with this album, or this comp, whatever. Uh, when I first heard it, I thought it was pretty good, but I didn't get why it was so acclaimed. I thought it had high, like incredible highs, but it didn't really like do much for me in terms of a full listen. And I thought pretty much the Peel versions were inferior, much inferior. But giving it more time, I realized that this thing is amazing and that it's pretty much perfect. And the Peel versions of this of these songs from the debut are almost all of them are much better. The only version that I prefer the debut the only song that I prefer the debut version of is Winter Around the Sun. But every other song I either pretty much vastly prefer these versions or in the case of this charming man it's pretty equal to me uh for one uh i wouldn't say this album has necessarily the best flow i mean it's not really an album so i can't count you know i can kind of excuse that but this thing has so many incredible songs and i think opening with william is really nothing is a perfect way to open this because that is an incredible song that I actually wasn't very fond of at first. I thought it was kind of okay, but now it's an absolute classic to me. Uh, the version of what difference does it make is a lot more uh, energetic, a lot more punchy that I really enjoy it a lot more. Uh, the falsetto sounds much better, even though I didn't mind the falsetto on the debut version. Uh, so, yeah, uh, one song I did want to talk about was Handsome Devil. Uh, I know I see a lot of Smiths fans who don't particularly like this song, and I don't know why, because it's honestly incredible. Uh, it's energetic. It has incredible lyrics, which, by the way, this is probably some of the gayest lyrics Morrissey ever wrote. And I mean that in a good, 
I mean that like this like this is an incredibly gay song. Which, um, by the way, I wanted to say that early Smiths, like, I say up to, like, Anita's murder. Like, Morrissey was just, like, very, uh, I wouldn't say sexual, but writing a lot about sex. Writing a lot about lust. And had a lot of very homoerotic sort of tendencies. I mean, their first single cover is literally a guy's ass. It's like, yeah. Uh, which I find that he doesn't really return to later. Just kind of sad to still. Um, Hands of the Devil is probably his best written lyrics about this topic. Uh, the wonderful thing about the Smiths, and I love when bands do this, um, it kind of takes me back to like sort of the 60s with like the Beatles and Pink or something like that. They had a lot of non album singles which is something a lot of British bands used to do. And I don't know, I just love it when groups just drop like non-album singles because it makes the single feel more like value. Because I feel like a lot of groups don't value the art of a single, especially having a B-side that not only is stellar, but actually fits so either musically or thematically with the A-side. And I think the Smiths are among the supreme masters of crafting a single. So I really love that they did this and they sort of resurrected that art form instead of just having a single to like promote an album or a music video or something. Um, How Soon Is Now? Um, I don't know what Gary was talking about when he said this track is nothing special. This is arguably their most special song. That doesn't mean it's my absolute favorite, but like, there's no other Smith song that sounds even remotely like this. That's that's not what I meant. I mean, it's definitely unique. I just I just don't particularly like. I get that, you know. I can I can see complaints with this song, but it, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, it's actually one of the first songs I heard by them, which yeah, it's like that usually for everybody, uh, and. Yeah, it is actually really surprising that it was a B-side to William It Was Really Nothing, which it's even more surprising that they tossed it on the 12-inch version of the single William It Was Really Nothing. So it wasn't even on the 7-inch version, which is, at the time, how most people bought singles, they, especially in England, they more so bought the 7-inch versions than the 12-inch versions. So, like, Rough Trade were just, like, they just tossed it off as a B-side, they didn't really think this song had much significance at all. And then organically, it just like blew up and it became their most popular song. Jeff Klein is crazy, but yeah, absolutely deserved because it's incredible. I love Johnny's guitar on it. It almost kind of sounds psychedelic, which is a word I would almost think to never describe the Smiths, but it, um, I could definitely see how like you know, people say this sort of inspired shoegaze. I think it inspired more so the Manchester uh, scene of the late 80s, especially since this kind of has, like, dance elements to it. It's not a, it's not a dance track uh, per se, but it has elements of that in it, and I think it works really well. Um, the version of Hand and Glove here is the original single version of their first single. The Hand and Glove version on the album is a different re-recorded version. Uh, I definitely prefer the album version. I don't like the way this version fades in. I like it to just start right away. And I don't think... I, this mix is a lot more muddier. And I don't particularly like that. But it's still a, it's still a great song, so I can accept it. Uh, I definitely prefer the version of... The Ill Ill here much better. Uh, it's a lot slower, and I think it's a lot better performed. Um, the second half has a lot of. Uh, I think I think it fell. Oh damn.
I think I'm being disconnected for a while. Some technical difficulties. Some technical difficulties. Ah, damn. Am I back? Yeah, yeah, you're back. Alright, I don't know what that was about. Uh, I was saying back to the old house. Uh, I really love, especially this version. I'm not particularly into the Rotted and Bombs version that much. But this version, I think, is incredible. I really love Johnny's sort of beautiful guitar playing on it. I think Morrison, that sounds absolutely wonderful on here. Uh, just really sort of, I don't know how to really describe it, but it, it sounds beautiful. Uh, this Night Has Opened My Eyes, I think, is incredible. I'll talk more about uh, it when we get to meet his murder, but I think Andy Rourke is a really underrated bassist, and I think he adds a lot to the group, and I feel like a lot of people don't really appreciate that. Um, and I think this is definitely one of his best bass performances. The lyrics are pretty much the story to the film A Taste of Honey, which is uh, one of Morrissey's favorite books slash films written by Sheila Delaney. Uh, who's actually on the cover of Louder Than Bonds. Um, and my act, my profile pic right now is actually a still from the movie. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, kind of appropriate. Great. But, uh, yeah, the, the lyrics to that song is literally just the plot of the film. Um, but, yeah, it's still excellent. Um, and one track I did want to mention was Please, Please, Please Let Me Get What I Want, which I'm actually really surprised no one has really mentioned because that's actually my favorite Smith song, and it's my second favorite song of all time. And oh, wow. What I love about this song is that, it's true for a lot of Smith songs, but I think especially this is that it's really, the lyrics are really simple, but they're absolutely relatable. Like, I don't think there's a single human being that can't relate to the feeling of Things aren't going your way in life, and for once you just want things to go right, even if it's for a moment or a second, whatever. You just want a mo you just want a time in your life where everything is smooth sailing. And I think Johnny's playing on that song is absolutely beautiful. Probably some of the most beautifully played uh, playing that he's ever uh, had in their discography and the mandolin outro is to die for i think it is it, it's my favorite part of the song probably my favorite moment in their discography and it's a really short song but it doesn't need more than that there's not much more you got the point of the lyrics you got as much beauty and as much power as they wanted to give you and that's the short song but it's absolutely a and i think it works really well as a closer to this and yeah uh so in short hatful is amazing i didn't appreciate it at first but as time goes on i have appreciated it a lot more yeah i think hatful is one of those albums that grows into you uh with more and more listens but yeah i do i do i, I want to mention that Actually, the bass, uh, in my opinion, comes more into into play, and uh, the queen is dead. But uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Gabe, what do you think of uh, Headful of Hollow? So I think Headful of Hollow is definitely one of their best albums, and um, I don't know, it's not like super high high up for well, it is of course they don't have a lot to really go off of. They only have like a handful. Um, yeah. But I think it's a great album, and I do love the Peel of Sessions versions of the songs on here. I don't think they surpass the versions on the, the self-titled, obviously. Um, I will say, however, that the version of This Charming Man probably actually does contest the original version for me. Uh, that is just a really incredible version. I love the... Um, I don't know how to describe it. Like, the, 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 the changes they make to the song. Uh, like, they, they make it a little bit faster. They make it more... I don't know. I, like, I'm trying to think of the word that I'm looking for, and it's just not coming to me. Um, Back to the Old House is one of my favorite Smith songs, actually. Top three again. <laughs> um, I That was one that I didn't come around on for a long time, because I, I recently 
with Captain Cook, me and him recently re-listened to the entire Smith's discography before this was even planned. Uh. Um, it was just for fun. And th- that was when I think I really got an appreciation for Hatful Apollo. So if you had asked me about three months ago what I thought of this album, I would have just said, it's okay, and I would have moved on. Um, but no, I really think there's something to appreciate here, and I love it. It's probably like my second favorite of the compilation albums. Um I, I think there are many great songs on here. I love the singles they collect on here. Like, you know, William, it was really nothing. How soon is now, which yeah, I can't believe that was a B side either. I mean, they made a video for it for God's sake. Um, the version of hand and glove on here. I actually do like, you know, the, the original single version. I kind of likened it. This is kind of the thought I was getting from uh, what Minto was getting at it. I kind of likened it to the original version of uh, Radio Free Europe by R.E.M., where there's yeah. It's yeah. pretty different, but I think both versions have stuff you can appreciate in them. Uh, but I will say that I do prefer the version that showed up on the albums <laughs> uh, for both cases. The version of Reeler on the Fountain on here is great. I don't think, it again, it, it doesn't surpass the version on the Smiths, but it's amazing. And uh, I also have to second why no one mentioned Please, Please, Please Let Me Get What I Want, because that song is, f- like, fucking amazing. One of the best they've ever done. Um... It's one of my favorite Smith songs for sure. Um, and then, of course, My Heaven Knows I'm Miserable Now is one of my favorites as well. I think this is definitely um, one of their more uh, song-based albums. I mean, it's a compilation, of course, so that makes sense. Don't know what, you know why it wouldn't make sense for that. But, um, you know, I, I think this is definitely a place where I have more favorite songs than I can say oh, you know, that album is one of my favorites. It's, no, I think this album has songs that I love, but not so much as an album. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not really much else for me to say. I think um, the stuff that would come back on Louder of Bombs is going to be where I'm going to talk more about it because uh, that's my favorite compilation by them. Same. And I, I'm definitely going to have a lot more to say when I kind of talk about how both of them fuse together, because I believe that louder than bombs was supposed to be like the U S's version of world won't listen and a house and a hat full of hollow. So that, that kind of makes sense in, in the case of it, but you know, I'll, I'll kind of prove I'll, I'll show up my argument when we get there, but yeah, hat full of hollow is great. I think it's a masterpiece really. I mean, it's a compilation. So uh, I can't really say that it's like a masterpiece of their core discography, but I think it's just a masterpiece in general, you know, um, it's consistent. I love most of the songs on here. I can't really think of one that I don't like. And yeah, I mean, there's just not much for me really to, to say. Besides that, it's good. That's nice. I, 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 I expected more uh more more hot takes on Hatful of Hollow. But uh yeah. After that, in nineteen eighty five, a year later, uh the Smiths would release what is in my opinion their weakest release. And actually, uh, it's kind of mediocre to my eyes, called Midi's Murder. Um, Midi's Murder is kind of kind of another one. They're still in the same style. Uh, however, I think the only song that I really like, as, as Soup said before his uh, microphone died down, is the fact that um, their openers are really great. And this is no... This is no... Um, no exception. The Headmaster Ritual is a great, a great opener. It, yeah, and man. to me, it is the best song on the album. Uh, but after that, uh, it kind of dies down. A lot of people joke around this saying it's the vegan album. And, it <laughs> <laughs> and it's really nice. Uh, I especially dislike the song, What She Said is the only song that I kind of dislike. One of the few songs I dislike from their discography. Um, uh, f- I do think that uh, it starts great with the Headmaster Ritual. However, it kind of dies down until the end, until Barbarism begins at home and Meter's Murder, which to me are where the where the kind of the album picks off again. Uh, but be- in between that, I think it's just a bunch of mediocre tracks that. Uh, they really did justice to the Smiths. Uh, the joke isn't funny anymore. What she said, nowhere fast, are just three tracks that I that I question myself. Why are they here? They don't work as well in what I think they're trying to achieve. And yeah, um, Morris's lyrics here are more odd. I think uh, it sounds a little bit too whiny, and the, the, the this is their worst production, to be honest, in any of their albums. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, it's not bad, it's just, uh, it has some great tracks, like, the self-titled is great, but my favorite one will always be the opener. The Headmaster Ritual is just a fantastic way to open an album. Too bad it was for this one, but, uh, yeah, uh, Captain Cook, what do you think about Midas Murder? Um, first time I listened to it, I might have had the same opinion as you, I'm not sure. I think this album is more of, like, a grower like when you listen to it more and more you can appreciate it more and more this album seems to be a lot of people's least favorite out of the main four but i do like this one a lot and it really has some strong strong songs on here something that's different from their first album is that bigger presence and bass i think minto mentioned that the bass on here is huge it like really carries some of the songs the intro song is probably my favorite, second favorite on this album. Morrissey's vocal performance on here is really fucking good. I don't think many people can pull off that vocal performance without sounding stupid. He's the only one that can make it sound that good. And I don't know if I'm biased or not, but this also might be one of my favorite songs because Radiohead covered this song. And I guess oh, I was I saw that, that, I was like... Oh shit, that is really good. And then I heard this one again and I appreciate it even more. So it might be that bias or it might not be. I'm not sure. I liked the song before I heard that cover though. But once I heard that, I was like, oh shit, the song is good. Where the bass is featured the most on here are in songs like Nowhere Fast and Barbarism Be Begins at Home. And now that I mentioned that song, Barbarism Begins at Home is probably my favorite song on this album. And then Headmaster's Ritual second. I have a friend that says that this is their worst song in the catalog. I don't understand that. This Which one? The is. Headmaster's Ritual? No, no, no. Barbarism. I think it's, it's a it's a horrible. I think it's a horrible track. To be completely honest, not horrible. Okay. Not, should I say should I say horrible? I should say more like mediocre. Uh, I said that those three spans of tracks, you know, uh, like those three tracks. Um, uh then, what she what she said uh no 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 uh there are three tracks that what she said the joke isn't fun anymore nowhere fast and then the album i mean for a seven minute song i think it tries to kind of go for something that it droning on to yeah it, however like the like, overall for, concept of it is not bad to me I yeah love but i on. think that uh as i said in the two in the last two tracks it kind of picks up again you know the barbarism begins at home and meet murder right. however meet is murder tries to do that does better what uh barbarism kind of just drags off for too long but it's my mm -hmm. opinion but but yeah um uh, i don't think it's a bad track i just think it's a i mean uh, half of it is kind of bad but then it's just a, a, a good a good uh, instrumentals but yeah uh, it might be like the quirks morrissey has too but i like that like he barks in the damn song but i like that i don't know what it is i like it like every album he has like this different quirk he brings that different noise like a bark or whatever and every album he has something i don't remember for each album but the only complaint that i really have about this album is um their self-titled song. I don't really like that song. It's one of the very few songs that I don't like from the Smiths. There's maybe Aww. one or two that I can think of. I don't know. It's just preachy and it's musically not that great. It's bland to me. But it's really the only song I don't like out of their whole discography. Every other song I can listen to and I enjoy it. But yeah, that's my overall take on this one. It's not my favorite, but I can appreciate it yeah um but yeah uh gary what do you think about Mary's murder i mean it's about veganism of course it sucks uh, no, I <laughs> um so this isn't i mean this is one of their albums that i i really don't have that much time with i think i've only listened to it once or twice but i i mean i think you know it's i i, I still find it pretty mediocre it's just it's i never really get that much out of it i i don't think that there are as many songs that work as you know, these these Stone Cold classic indie jangle pop songs as you know you had on their first album and Hot, Hat Full of Hollow. Um, I I do agree the title track is pretty off. It's just it's it's the worst song. It's it's like you know it was one of the few songs on here that wasn't um, bland and was just straight up bad. I just you know right. I don't get why they that track exists. I don't know. It's this is this is not a strong strong point for them with me. 
Maybe it'll click sometime down the line, but I doubt it. You doubt it'll click with you? Um, I, I doubt. Yeah, it. I, doubt I, it. I doubt it too. <laughs> just, just because most Smith's material clicks has clicked really quickly with me, just because of how catchy you know the songwriting is, um, and how I respond to that, and I, I just didn't respond to any of that with most of the songs in this album. I thought I, I thought a couple of them were good though. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you say the Headmaster's Ritual is not is not a good song, uh, that's where you where you really have a hot take. But yeah, uh, Mint, what do you <laughs> think know, about Midas Murder? Well, uh, a lot of you are shitting on this album, and I feel like I'm gonna be the main defender because I think this album is brilliant. Honestly, I don't know how controversial this is, but I think this is better than the debut. Whoa. Oh, and I think what? Wait, wait, wait! Repeat it, what you said. It's better than their first album, and not only that, oh, okay. it improves upon every mistake that the first album had. Oh, oh, damn. oh. Uh, I can understand that. I don't agree with it, but I understand it. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like a lot of people they discount this album. I I enjoy every Smiths album, and we'll get to the one that I discount later. But yeah, this is excellent, honestly. Um, for one, I love the playing on here. I think in general, this has some of their best points. I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, and I'll get to this. This is Andy Wark's best album. He yes. is absolutely fucking phenomenal on even the tracks that I'm not like as big on. I mean, there's no track that I don't like, but there's tracks that, you know, I don't necessarily love as much as others, but uh, ev even on those tracks, he's incredible. Every single one. I don't know exactly like how, but he just like has like some of the catchiest little bass lines that just like really like they're genuinely groovy, they're genuinely effective, and like yeah, it's it's incredible. Um, I think Johnny Moore is also really excellent on this album. The one thing, though, is that this is kind of like the opposite of Strange Ways, and we'll get to when we get to Strange Ways, is that this album, this is, if you don't like Morrissey, this is probably the one Smith's album that I think you'll get enjoyment out of, because this is the one album where, for the most part, he kind of shuts the fuck up and lets everybody do their thing and let's have a turn to shine. Like, I think pretty much everybody, even Mike Joyce, I don't think Mike Joyce did, like, much of anything on the debut. He kind of sounds like a drum machine, which I know is also due mm -hmm. to the production, but, like, even on here, he has some nice fills, and I'm just like, and it just genuinely, every, I don't know what was up with Morrissey, he just felt like giving everybody a chance to shine, but, like, the that won't happen again. Yeah, that definitely won't. <laughs> <laughs> everybody does their thing on this album. Uh, Headmaster Ritual, fantastic song. Uh, I usually don't say this, I could definitely tell you, but like, this song, kind of scarily to me, at least Johnny's playing, sounds a lot like R.E.M. Uh, usually, and I don't, even though they have the same style, I wouldn't necessarily say that about them, but yeah, this track definitely sounds a lot like R.E.M. I'm not complaining though, I'm just saying, uh, fantastic lyrics I, this is also the point where they get a lot more political this is easily the most political album not even just because of the title track but like almost every song has like something to do with political issues at least like relating to that and yeah headmaster ritual fantastic uh the next three tracks I'm not necessarily in love with, but they're still really good. Rush Home Fian, uh, I don't think is the most musically interesting, but I really love Mercy's vocals on that track because he entirely makes the song. The melody of the song goes in all different kinds of directions. I don't know if he necessarily repeats anything melodically on the song, or at least to a great effect. He just completely shifts it, and I love the way that he just completely shifts the song. Uh, I want the one I can't hide is not necessarily.
necessarily again the most musically interesting but i really love the chorus in this i think johnny is playing really great on yeah yeah i think the guitar playing to be honest i think that the bass works better on uh the queen is dead but uh we're gonna get to that I still respect that take, but yeah, uh, surprising that you think this is better than the oh, self-titled. Not, yeah, uh, um, what she said, it's probably the weakest song here. I'm sorry, ah, my yeah. family's being fucking stupid. If you can, <laughs> nah, don't worry. Uh, uh, okay, so before okay. before we move on, we're gonna move on to Gabe. Gabe, what do you think yeah, about Midas Murder? I'll continue my thoughts in a sec. Nah, don't worry. Right, sounds good. So wait, am I ready? Am I good to go now? Yeah. You're yes. Good. Okay. So Meat is Murder is without a doubt. I can say this without any thought is my least favorite uh, Smiths album. Um, I don't think it's a bad album. I just think it's definitely their weakest. I don't think the Smiths have a truly bad album. I don't think they have a truly bad release in general. Um, but it's far and away my least favorite uh, and their weakest as well. Um, while, while, you know, um, it has an amazing opener, as we've already stated, the Headmaster's Ritual is incredible. Um, and yes, every, just about every Smiths release does have an incredible opener. So I, I'm just going to put that out there right now that I do agree with that take as well. Uh, the rest of the album is pretty, I don't know, it's pretty buoyant for me in terms of how much I like it. Um, <laughs> uh, Rush Home Ruffians, I'm not terribly fond of. Nowhere Fast, Well I Wonder, and those are the other ones that I'm not really crazy about. My favorite songs on here, though, are definitely, of course, The Headmaster's Ritual, I Want the One I Can't Have, um, and Barbarism Begins at Home. That's a fantastic yes. song, and that's my second favorite on the album, actually. Uh, but also, the title track, Meet His Murder, is my least favorite Smith song. Um, Good. I really, I, I agree with what Captain Cook was saying. I think it's, you know, kind of preachy and annoying. Um, you know, if you, I, I don't really have a problem with musicians expressing their views obviously it's just i feel like this is a pretty i don't know for me it's not a great way that they went about it and it just makes for a really laughable experience i guess um yeah i think the headmaster's ritual is amazing and similar to captain cook as well i saw the uh the radiohead cover and i thought it was you know amazing and that's what made me i think really go back to the song and be like damn that's really good because <laughs> You know, there's no other. I don't think if I had heard that, I would have. I wouldn't have gone in with an appreciation to think. Hmm, let me see if I like the original now that I can kind of go back with a new look at it and think. You know, what do I think of the original now? And I think it's great. It's definitely my favorite off the album. Um, in general, though, I don't know. I'm not really a fan. I do love the album cover, though. Something I did want to mention as well that we kind of already cycled through about just a little bit. Um, was that. Uh, the Smiths album covers, they all utilize images from like 60s culture, 60s film, 60s yeah. poets, authors, that kind of thing. Like the cover for uh, the first Smiths album was taken from an, a Warhol movie, I think, uh, which I, I think is like my favorite of all yeah, their covers. Uh, but the Meet is Murder cover is fantastic. I do like the the editing on the guy's head, on his helmet, the to write Meet is Murder on the helmet. Uh, I'm trying to remember what film that it's, it's from. It's some war film. Um, I don't. I think the, the I think the title involves pigs. I don't remember exactly, um, but the album cover actually has made me kind of interested in the film itself. And I think a lot of the Smiths albums have done that as well. They've gotten me interested in, in other media, um, you know, because obviously you can kind of see that there's a bit of an influence from this culture that's finding itself in the Smiths' music. And uh, I think Meet Is Murder is a well, maybe it's not the most prime example, but. I think the album cover definitely exemplifies that pretty well. Um, yeah, so I mean, just in general, it, it's my least favorite album. I don't think it's terrible. I don't even think it's bad. But um, just in my opinion, it's 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 their weakest far and away. Um, yeah. Really quick, just to go uh, on to what Gabe was saying. Go was ahead. Say? Damn. Um, <laughs> with the. I messed you up. Shit, I forgot now. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, Mint, are you ready so to continue to for for a bit? I, I think he's not. I think when he does it, when he's unmuted, uh, he will continue. But for now, we'll I move on. I remember if now. I could, if okay, I could okay. point real quick. Go ahead. Uh, Mintos, 
about how how melodic the bass lines are here. And I think that's something yeah. that's, that was really important to highlight. I think throughout the Smiths' career, the 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 fact that the I mean the guitar along with the bass really worked to car- uh, carry the melody is one of the signature you know reasons why Jangle Pop is so cool. Is definitely like also done by REM in their earliest iterations. Mm-hmm. It incredibly well so that yeah, was, yeah. I'll, I'll talk about the instrumentation when we get to a certain two albums but you know for now i'm just kind of going with what everyone else has to say <laughs> but uh, ahead, captain cook what do you have to say what do you have to say yeah um as far as meat is murder like the self-titled song like songs with politics i can enjoy as long as they're good even if i don't agree with them they have to be good and i'll still listen to them but if they're not good like yeah, in same. this case i'm like yeah skip sorry <laughs> but but that's pretty much it like i'm okay with putting your opinions out there that's what music is about that's what books are about that's what everything's about you're allowed to voice your opinion and voice yourself even if people don't agree with it but make the song good so people yeah. will actually listen <laughs> to you <laughs> but yeah. that's pretty much it mint have you uh, are you able to talk now Oh, I do. Uh, Can you hear me now? Um, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Conti- uh, complete your thoughts on Midas Murder. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry about that. That was completely just like my family just like had an argument. Nah, don't worry, man. Anyway, um, I'm glad I came back before you moved on. Anyway, uh, I think I was like halfway through the album. Anyway, that joke isn't, isn't funny anymore. That's actually one of my favorite songs by them. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I think the lyrics that Morrissey puts on that song are fantastic. Uh, I really loved sort of the one minute mark, the sort of the bridge, like when he goes, even when they fall down, even when they fall down. I just love, and I love Johnny's playing at that part. Uh, it's kind of a long winded song, but I think it's completely justified in its length. And yeah, just absolutely beautiful song. Uh, Nowhere Fast, um, it kind of instrumentally is like more of an upbeat version of Rush Home Ruffians, which by the way, those two songs have kind of a noticeably like rockabilly influence to them. Like Johnny's playing is definitely inspired by rockabilly on that song. Uh, I think the lyrics on Nowhere Fast are really great. Uh, Still not an absolute favorite of mine, but still a really awesome song. And then what is possibly the most underrated is Well I Wonder, which I listen I've been listening to that song a lot. Not even just for this, but like in general, just like one of just the song I've been listening to. Uh I really love Andy's bass playing on this song, the sort of stop and then go kind of do 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 stop and then do 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 stop. I really love that. Um, and then Johnny's playing is also like really sort of soft and melodic. In a, um, Morrissey has sort of the falsetto come back, but it's actually very beautiful. Probably his best falsetto performance that he's done. Um, I don't know why a lot of people don't talk about this song, but it's genuinely fantastic. One of my absolute favorites on this album, and possibly by them in general. And then you get to the, what is my favorite song on the album? The absolute monster of a beast, Barbarism Begins at Home, (laughs) which is the greatest Andy Rourke performance of all time. He is absolutely on fire on this song and on this song genuinely if he performed every song like he did on this song he'd be one of my favorite bassists of all time i still think he's great but he's not quite on that level but um the, it's kind of has like a funk sort of element to it not in the same way that like talking heads would but like i don't know it's very groovy possibly like the one song by the Smiths that can just make you dance. And the thing is, though, it's seven minutes, and it's a fairly repetitive song, and you think that it'd have no reason to be that length. You think, like, it'd go on for too long and be very monotonous, but it actually has value. 
to go on for seven minutes. Like there's actually towards the end, genuine progression and interesting changes that make the seven minutes well worth it. Um, kind of like how a dance record is, you know, dance records, especially in the seventies and eighties used to go on for a very long time, but they'd have very interesting changes and progressions that made the long wait worth it. And I think this song does that fantastically. I really love uh, the lyrics, you know, with more she's talking about a crack on the head. It's what you get for not. I love that part. Um, same, it's really same. funny. I think it's some of his funniest lyrics. Uh, but we do have to talk about the title track, and it's easily their most controversial song. And I can understand why. Um, you know, it's definite. It can definitely come off as preachy. It's very minimalistic in terms of its instrumentation, which I can see boring a lot of people. But um, it's not one of my favorite songs by them, but it's a very important song to me. I could kind of say that song changed my life in a way even though i hate saying because you know it uh i don't want to get too personal on here but you know i am vegan and getting into the smiths was kind of like one of the first times where like i genuinely was like thinking about oh you know this is what i i mean i knew that you know meat was from animals and shit but i never really gave much thought into it and gave thought into the morality of it and it kind of helped me change my perception of it all. Didn't change me right away, but eventually it did uh, do its wonders on me. Uh, I can understand its complaints. I'm not saying the song is above critique, but maybe because the song had such an emotional effect on me, that's why I love it so much. And plus, it's their most post-punky kind of song. So, And since I love that, you know, musically, that's why I love it. I don't know. I love it either way. Uh, I love Meet His Murder. Fantastic album. Not necessarily perfect, but I think the highs are incredible and the lows are still pretty good. Um, much better than the debut. Doesn't really have the same issue as the debut. I'm saying that once again because it's very true. And um, yeah, great album. Great performances, a very unique album in their discography because every member gets a chance to shine instrumentally. And Andy Rourke, your goddamn amazing face that needs to get more recognition for that. That's my thoughts on Meet His Murder. That's that's I actually kind of agree with a, with a lot of issues, but I think that where this fails the most is the fact that, as I said, there are a collection of tracks that just don't seem quite work well. I do think, even though the self-title is a little preachy, I do like it because it, it does what the rest of the album can't in many ways. But, uh, but yeah. Uh, so after that, in 1986, uh, the Smiths would release what I think is their most iconic album and one of the most iconic albums ever. It's uh, number 27 in radio music as one of the best albums of all time, and with reason. Yeah. Um, so in 1986, they released The Queen is Dead to the public. And uh, this is my favorite Queen, the, the Smiths album. My uh, favorite Queen. <laughs> my favorite Queen album. Uh, because front to back, it does everything their other albums try to achieve, but it does it in a better and more to the point way. Uh, there are a lot of ideas uh, that are put onto this record that do work as well. I love how the album starts with a kind of sample that just jumps onto the Queen is Dead. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah it's awesome. it's one of the best ways to start a, an, an album that I know. And all the songs here are outstanding. I think this is the best performance of Johnny Marr in guitar and Andy Rourke in bass guitar. Uh, especially on tracks like "The Queen Is Dead," "Cemetery," "Cemetery Gates," uh, "The Boy with the Thorn in His Side," and "There's a Light That Never Goes Out" um, is just an an instant classic on on this Miss discography. Uh, I do think this album deserves the praise it gets. There's not a bad song here, and there are a lot of classics. Uh, the opener is. This is just uh, Johnny Marr on his best. Uh, 
I really can't get out of the way that uh, the six minutes, uh, almost seven, almost, uh, of a track does better than what uh, Meat is Murder, uh, the self title track, and and the other, tr- and the other, the seven minute track try to achieve. Uh, but yeah, uh, I do think there's a lot to take from this album. Songs like, even the songs like Vicarin Tutu and, uh, I Know It's Over and Frankly, Mr. Schlankly have a lot to offer. They do have, the, the production here, it's very special to put in a way. It's, it's kind of pristine, but at the same time, it's kind of moody in a way. There's so much, uh, that it's put on to here. And he, this has Morris's best vocals in my opinion. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah. It's it's really really. It's a really really solid project. It's one of the best. With with a lot of reasons. This used to be one of my favorite albums. I need to re-listen to it to see if it still holds up. But uh, yeah. I, I do love the way that the tracks. Just flow right into each other. Which is not something that happened on the previous albums. I love I love especially the ending some girls are bigger than others that ends in this in this way that just it's kind of a contraposition for what the queen how the queen is that it start it starts off the album but uh lyrics lyrically instrumentally and I think Mike Joyce is one of the most underrated drummers of the 80s to be completely honest his uh his contributions to the album are just great and the uh the fuck that there's are there are some string arrangements in some tracks that are used in such a great way do say a lot here like i think they brought an ensemble for the orchestration and you can certainly feel that it gives this album a more uh kind of dark uh feel. i think this is their darkest album their most melancholic to put it in a way the lyrics the instrumentation everything comes together to just that mood uh, there's kind of an existential dread that can be felt within the the each track and morris's lyrics sound passionate but at the same time like they feel like they come from a from a sad dude that is just wanting to get everything done with but yeah i do think the queen is that deserves to be recognized as the best smith's album uh, yeah, uh, Captain Cook, what do you think about The Queen is Dead? I agree with you on pretty much every point you made. Top the album, this album is great. Even the weaker songs on here, like Never Have No One Ever and Vicar and a Tutu, you can take that songs. Those songs have good parts in them that make them great and make the whole album great. This album also has my favorite songs on here from the Smiths, too. The intro song is super strong. I've heard complaints about it being too long. I don't fucking understand that. I love it top to vo- bottom, Wait, vocally and instrumentally. Yeah, I've heard that. Oh my it's God. too long. It needs to get to the point. I'm like, the fuck? No, <laughs> They're high. I love They're the high. length. Yeah, they are. I love the length. It's It's great. It keeps on layering stuff, so it deserves the length it has. Also, I know it's over. It's probably one of the best vocal performances that Morrissey has in the Smiths discography. And that's saying a lot because he's always bringing his A game lyrically and vocally. Um, Big Mouth Strikes Again. It's funny that you mentioned the drummer because I really noticed the drummer is because of this song. The drum break near the end of the song is so fucking good. After listening yeah. to that, I really, I really, really paid attention to the drummer more. Because before, I'm like, eh. The other three stand out, and he's just, he's just there to fill in the drum spot. But I was so wrong. Well, after I heard that song, I try to give him as much props as I can where he deserves it. Um, another banger, "A Boy with a Thorn Is Inside." That oh, yeah. song is fucking good. <laughs> When I listen to the song, I just imagine Morrissey dancing on stage with that fucking iconic branch in his ass that he always a- has. I fucking love that song. The last song on here, the the outro song, is another one of my favorites. Um, it has one of my favorite guitar performances by Mar, I think. Usually everybody says Morrissey is the heart of a lot of Smith songs and the heart of the Smith and 
general bullshit. At least Mar is definitely the star of the show. The tone on the guitar, everything. He carries a song. Morrissey just sings one line over and over again. I like <laughs> I like the vocals on it, but I listen to that song because of Mar. That song is really fucking good. When, whenever people say that Morrissey is the heart of the Smiths, he was a vital part uh, of it, but the instrumentation just wouldn't be the same if it was just like exactly. kind of kind of Morrissey solo stuff. Like when you uh, see him live now, you 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 know those two were meant for each other. Yeah. Morrissey brings the vocals when he's touring solo, but when you hear Mar touring solo, the instrumentation is just fucking amazing but he lacks in the vocals that's just how it is yeah it's just i mean all the band is basically a band and one thing that be, like people think that morrissey is like the genius and he certainly is a vital part of it but uh he's not the smith the, wouldn't be the smith yeah Mar and without everybody else you know what i mean everybody is important even the drummer as i stated like i didn't really notice him at first but now i'm like wow i can really appreciate him yeah uh, i certainly do agree with you like the drums everything comes together in this album um uh, but sure. yeah uh gary what do you think about the queen is dead so this is my second favorite smiths i guess project um i'll say because like i think that this is their best album now because it's it's just it, it inter and what i'm saying album just talking about something that feels you know cohesive as 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 this piece of music um the the um sorry i'm, I'm scatterbrained it's 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 gothic it's dark it's got this like great um, atmosphere to it it's 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 it, you know it's got the classic smith's instrumentation of that bass and those jangly guitars and and morrissey's voice and uh the the songwriting is at its peak here i think i think that uh cemetery gates big mouth strikes again i fucking love um the boy with a thorn in his side i think that's one of the greatest like pop songs ever written honestly it's so catchy like just just it's it's one of those songs it's just from the title it's already stuck in my head and it's gonna take forever to get it out yes um yeah it's a fucking great song um there's a light that's never go that that does that ah, ah. there's a light that never goes out it has sort of been co-opted by this awful uh, meme doomer, whatever. It's going <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus it, Christ! It, it's, it's genuinely like one. Of, it's genuinely an amazing song. It's just it. It's the culmination of the sort of the the you know the the darker sort of gothic uh, atmosphere that they create on this album, especially with the with the lyrical theme of this guy or the the narrator asking asking to go out at night with someone and he's you know doesn't care if they get into a car crash because he'd, he'd he'd be okay if he were to die with that person it's just it's very it, i mean i'm struggling to find another adjective than gothic it's it's very you know, it's very melancholic it's, 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 very melancholic it's 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 melancholic it's it's very it's it's melodramatic actually that, that that's that's the word i'll use it's it's a very melodramatic song which um characteristic of, of of morrissey and of the smiths yeah i think this is um like i like my favorite smiths collection of songs is hatful of hollow but the queen is dead is my favorite smiths album I'll, that, that's what i'll say if, if that makes any sense yeah i think it's a it's a great take i honestly have them both at uh, the same level in i think the queen the queen is dead is more straight up to the point Mainly because it's shorter and because it does, uh, it does have a great production. Uh, Mint, what do you think about the Queen is Dead? Uh, absolute masterpiece. But like everybody knows that, even if you're not like huge in the Smiths, you can't not recognize that this is one of the most defining musical statements like ever made. Um, this album, I think, well, for one, it's it's their best album. And also, like, my favorite. And it's not even just up to this point, but in general. Uh, and I think it pretty much is... For one, it has absolutely their best songwriting. I think the songs are... every Almost every song is just fantastically written. Uh, I, the way this album opens, you know, with that sample from... Uh, I believe the film is The L-Shaped Room. I don't know. It's one of those early 60s kitchen sink cinema drama films that uh, Morrissey loved. 
make he makes like the cover to all the albums and shit. Uh, but yeah, I love the way that sample plays into the amazing drum fill that Mike Joyce does. Uh, this is Mike Joyce's best album. I don't think he dominates this album the same way that Andy Warp did Meet His Murder, but he's still excellent. Uh, and I love that open drum fill. Uh, this song, it's a long song, but it is actually fairly justified for being its length. Uh, and it has like some of Morrissey's best lyrics. I especially love, you know, uh, the part where he's talking about, uh, I know you and you cannot sing. I said, that's nothing. You should hear me play piano. Like, that's one of the funniest things he's written on. Uh, and yeah, fantastic song, fantastic opener too. Might be their best opener, or at least the song that works best. As if it's not my favorite song that happens to be an opener. Uh, frankly, Mr. Shankly is just hilarious lyric after hilarious lyric, lyric which I don't, I get, but like a lot of people say the Smiths are just like gloomy, sort of like you know this depressing sort of no hope in the world kind of band, but it's like, you know, they have it's, a lot it's, of... It's more than that. Yeah, like... And plus, is a... Go ahead, sorry, I'm stealing oh, your spot. They have a lot of a uh, very sort of, I wouldn't say upbeat, but like very sort of sarcastic and funny weird. And I think this song is definitely an example of uh, pretty much every line like, works really well. I love Johnny's playing on here very simple, but you know, it's extremely effective. Uh, and something that I love about this album is that I don't know if it's something a lot of people appreciate about it, but I love that they put I Know It's Over and Never Had No One Ever back to back. Like, because it's basically 10 minutes of the darkest the Smiths ever got. Like, those two tracks were incredibly dark. Like, honestly, they kind of rival the darkest moments of, like, The Cure, like, Joy Division. Mm -hmm. Joy Division, yeah, definitely. Uh, I know it's over. It's just, like, possibly, I wouldn't say it is, but it's definitely up there for, like, their most depressing song. Uh, but the lyrics are fantastic. It's, it's a very long song, and it's musically bearing like there's not a lot to it but the little that there is is absolutely effective it absolutely um works i don't really know how to necessarily describe it but it just works morrissey's lyrics um are some of his best you know especially when he gets to the point where like if you look so funny or like if you like the if you like part of the song where he just keeps on saying a bunch of like if you sentences. Uh, I love. Uh, and then he asks a question after that. I think, yeah, it's just fantastic lyrically. Never Had No One Ever, I think, is also a fantastic song. I especially love the way that song ends. And I love the lyric. It, I had a really bad dream. It lasted 20 years, seven months. 27 days like it's such an oddly specific lyric and i love it i don't know just that quirky sensibility to morrissey that i just absolutely work and then pretty much from then on you get like some of their poppiest and well most well-written songs like they've ever done like like the second side of this album is damn near it feels like our greatest hits compilation honestly not only because all of the all the songs, except for maybe like Vicar and the Tutu, are like absolutely iconic, but like they feel like hits. They sound like hits. They have that sort of I mean, of course in their own Smith's way, but it has that sort of feel of like, yeah, this is an accessible song. You know, this is a very catchy and melodic song. Uh, Cemetery Gates uh, not to be confused with the song Cemetery Gates by the much inferior band Pantera. Uh, <laughs> the song, it's very morbid. 
but the way Morrissey sings it, it's kind of like an everyday occurrence, which I guess it was, you know, he used to go around cemeteries and just like look around and just like basically take in the atmosphere, which is uh, not exactly the most normal thing to do, but do your thing. Uh, yeah, just fantastic playing. Some of the most fantastic playing from Johnny Moore on that song. Uh, Big Mouth Strikes Again, I think, is probably Johnny's best guitar moment. I think he's absolutely phenomenal on that song, on guitar. Uh, I especially love... I. It's a shame we never get to that point, you know, where he's, like, going in the bridge, kind of, the instrumental section. The way he just rides that... It's amazing. Uh, Morrissey is absolutely on fire on that song. Basically talking about the how much of a controversial figure he was in terms of... I mean, still is, but at that time. Controversial in a different way. Uh, and I love the way he sort of just brushes his off like hey i was joking hey you know i didn't mean anything by it you know, i got all this controversy from what i said um, the boy with the thorn in the side uh i love that song lyrically uh that song feels very close to there is a light to me they're kind of written in a very similar way which is probably why it's uh, absolutely one of my favorites on here it's actually my second favorite song on the album uh and the way they incorporated strings, which uh, is the first time they're doing so, which kind of like, if you don't know the original like mission statement of this message, just to be as simplistic and like ordinary compositionally as possible, to kind of get away from all this sort of synth-based uh, And I feel like with them adding the strings, it kind of uh, kills that mission statement but like if it's fantastic i'm fine with it i don't care i'm not above enjoying stuff uh and it's done really well uh vicar natutu i know a lot of people kind of like aren't as big into this song it's definitely not a highlight for me in fact it's my least favorite song but it's still fantastic and i think it flows really well and so the, the absolute master there is a like that never goes out uh -oh. It's not my favorite from them, but it's absolutely deserving of all the hype that it gets. It absolutely is one of the greatest songs I ever did. And I love it. Uh, the lyrics are some of the best Morris he ever wrote. If a double decker bus crashes into us, die by your side. Such a heavenly way to die. But I know every lyric to the song, and all of them are amazing. Uh, I really love. The way it ends with those strings, those very beautiful strings that come in at the end, just an absolutely sublime, and perfect. Song. The the orchestral arrangements on this album are just wonderful. Some of the best I've heard on any '80s album, to be completely honest. Honestly, uh, and then it ends with "Some Girls Are Bigger Than Others," which I know is kind of a controversial track. A lot of people don't like how silly the lyrics are, but I absolutely love it for that. Uh, and I actually think it closes the album well. Uh, a lot of people say they kind of preferred if there's a like close the album, but I kind of like how like for an album lyrically as dark as this, you just close it off with something like in a much lighter tone, and it just like completely like derails everything. Kind of like the music, a musical version of like a shit post where it's like you've got like all this serious shit <laughs> and it's like oh here's a joke at the end but it's more than that it's actually it's actually fantastic johnny moore's playing on that is really beautiful some of my favorite playing from him uh and some of the yeah some of his best and the way it sort of fades out i think it's, i don't usually like it when songs fade in and out but it works here really well so in short absolutely massive of an album uh their best up to this point and absolutely deserving all the praise that it gets yeah 
Yeah, I think it's a great album, to be completely honest. An achievement, to put it in a way. But, uh... But, yeah. Um, Gabe, what do you think about The Queen is Dead? So I just kind of want to preface this by saying that I'm kind of frustrated right now because I my thoughts on all of these albums have just been coming out terribly, so uh, bear with me with this one as well because chances are I'm probably not going to get across what I want to say. So just to kind of start off, this is an incredible album. Um, uh, it's, I think, out of the studio albums, it would be my second favorite, um, without a doubt. And it used to be my favorite for a very slim period of time. <laughs> Um, I think this is the most songwriting wise, this is the strongest Smith album, like in terms of um, the drums, the bass, the guitar, all of that working together. If we disregard Morrissey's lyricism, this is like the strongest one. Um, so but for the lyricism, it would be the, uh, the Smith self-titled. <clears throat> um, I think um, the, like, the first thing I think of when I think of The Queen is Dead is I think of the instrumentation on this album. Um, songs like The Queen is Dead, of course, the intro, which I think really sets out the album off in a really perfect way. Um, I, I really could not think of any in this album, you know, because I think with some Smith's albums, you could maybe fix up the opener, but on this, no, 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 definitely not. I think like the two strongest openers they have are really around the fountain, and uh, The Queen is Dead. They are without a doubt the strongest for me. Um, I think in terms of the other songs, uh, the, some of these are, are I, I wouldn't call them really growers. They're just songs that I don't really listen to all that much. I think out of all of the Smiths albums, this is surprisingly the one I've listened to. I don't know. It's not the least. It's close to the least, though. I don't really put on this album all that much or any of its songs. Um, it's more of just a wholesale appreciation for me than one that I'm really super, super, super crazy about. Um, that might be a bit controversial of a take considering it's often considered either their best or it's their most, you know, respected, their most acclaimed, whatever. I, I just, it's not one that I see myself appreciate, but it's not one that I listen to an absolute a lot. Uh, this is definitely a song album for me. One that I listen to songs off of more than I do the actual album, which I do with a lot of Smiths. Actually, I'm not really an album guy for them. I've always listened to their songs more because I never really find myself in the mood for a Smith's album. It's only just Smith's songs. Um, but this is an, an album that I think in general, I've listened to more as songs than anything else. Uh, Big Mouth Strikes Again somehow has subconsciously probably been my most played song by them because they play that song at my work for some reason. Um, <laughs> that I think was actually when I really started to appreciate that song because for a while, Captain Cook can tell you, I had a very hot take and I did not really like that song all that much. Um, I thought it was just kind of okay. Uh, but now, uh, as fate would have it, it's one of my favorite on the favorites on the album, probably top three even. Um, undeniably brilliant. Um, I, I see a lot of people either put this in their top songs by the Smiths, or maybe even some people with their top songs of all time. Uh, I don't really see that. For me, I think there are a bunch of songs by the Smiths that really overshadow it, but that's what happens when you have some really expert songwriting. Uh, me and Captain Cook just argued about this the other day. Uh, I think he may have thought that I thought it was a terrible song, and I don't want it to seem like that, but I think that there's about 20 other songs that are also 10 out of 10 that, that overshadow that song for me. Um, see, I, I have a very controversial take with uh, The Queen is Dead as a whole, as you can really see. Um, um, the Boy with the Thorn in His Side is, besides the title track, probably my favorite on this album. Um, it, uh, it's one of my favorite songs musically from The Smiths. It, it's really just a perfect... God, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, it's like, I, I would see it as almost like a perfect Smiths pop song. Yeah, it's it's um, perfect pop. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I want to. That's how exactly how I want to go about it. Is that it's a perfect pop song and one of my favorite Smith songs for sure, without a doubt. In fact, it was my favorite song by theirs until I listened to their self-titled um, all those like two years ago. Um, <laughs> and then uh, my other two favorites, of course, on here, I, uh, similar to the one-two punch of uh, what, what album had the one-two punch? I think it was the self-titled. My as I as you can see, my brain is currently operating like salami. <laughs> so. You know, you got to bear with me. I don't even know why. I didn't go to, I didn't have work today. Like, this is the first podcast ever that I've been on. I didn't have work to for today. And it's the one with my least formed thoughts. 
Of course. That's just my luck. It's just what um, happens. Exactly. Um, but uh, there's like that never goes out, and some girls are bigger than others. Are have probably the the my favorite like duo of back to back songs, possibly in the entire Smiths discography. Um, at least you know on par with the the one two punch from the Smiths self titled, uh, which might edge it out slightly. But I think there's light that never goes out. It's just one of honestly removing biases. Uh, I, I had this kind of idea the other day, and this was one that came up. I had an idea of if I removed all the bias that I have for songs that I consider my favorite, what do I think are the most, like, are the greatest songs of all time that with like that aren't just favorites of mine? What do I think are just the most brilliant songs? And I think There's Light That Never Goes Out is one of those. Um, it, it's just a phenomenal piece of songwriting, musically and lyrically. And I think that if someone, you know, tells me they don't like it, I'm going to tell you, listen to it again, because um, <laughs> I, I don't really, God, it, it it's so incredible. Like, it, it's not necessarily a favorite song of all time for me, but I think it's just one of the greatest songs of all time in general. It's, it's one of the of most things. iconic at this yes, point. Yes, that too. It's one of the most well-written. It's one of the most iconic. I, it's like, you know, I think I'd put it in the same group. Like, some of the other songs that I kind of came up with would be like Pink Floyd's Echoes, uh, A Day in the Life by the Beatles. You know, like the, these really iconic songs. This one's the other one I kind of had. I didn't. I had some non-iconic songs in there. Like I, I would honestly put like "Fast Car" by Tracy Chapman in there as well. But yeah. you know, I think like in in terms of um, you know, just great songwriting. There's like that never goes out. It's just a really prime example. And some girls are bigger than others is a great way to close the album. I, I think I agree with what Minto was saying about how it's a nice injection of you know lightheartedness because the queen is dead is actually like a really misanthropic album in general i want to say or at least it's very um melancholic i guess is a better word um i, I think it's like the go-to album um that, that most people think of when they really want to point to really depressing crooning songwriting and it's like the queen is dead it's like one of the, the doomer key examples of that um yeah <laughs> as we mentioned with the doomer thing earlier um yeah it's a prime example there um yeah it, it it's a very nice balance for the album because it's a very sad uh, well not sad but i guess it's a dark sounding album like yeah i think if if hmm like the, the kind of comparison that I want to get at is like, you know, we mentioned the cure already and how it kind of rivals their darkest moments. I think that in terms of this album, I think rivals sort of the darkest moments of, um, I don't know if pornography is really the best example. I mean, that nah, album is nah, really nihilistic think. as hell. Um, but you know, it's like, I'm trying to think of one cure album that's got like that kind of blend of it. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll think of it eventually and I'll, I'll put it in the, the comments when we post this podcast, but it's like, the, I, there's a balance I can kind of hear that makes me think of a certain cure album, but I got to spend some more time thinking about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, my thoughts are not really well formed right now, which sucks. And I'm really, I'm really upset at myself for that. Uh, because this is one of my favorite bands. Like you sound fine, man. Don't no, nah, it, it was, it was, it was great. It was it, it, there, yeah, those were some I, good takes. Know. You know, just, when I when I hear you know bad yeah. take or, or unthoughtful, it's completely different to what you just did, man. Come on, don't beat yourself. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's just there's more that I want to say, more that I want to describe because this is a band that's really important to me. They were one of the bands that really got me into indie music. Um, at the recommendation of Captain Cook, actually, he made me listen to Queen Is Dead. Um, when we first met, so I kind of have him to thank for that. So it's like it's something that's really important to me that I really was hoping I'd be able to say a little bit more about beyond like the smiths and like the self-titled album and then another album that's coming up um but i i think you know i'm kind of getting it out base level what i want to say and yeah that's kind of all i really have to say about the queen is dead is that it's a really solid album it's a masterpiece in every regard and it used to be one of my favorite albums of all time but it kind of fell out since i haven't really appreciated it all that much it's fallen down quite a bit um but Don't i can really yeah um <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'll do that when you re-listen some of my favorites, okay? Mm. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so it, it, I still really appreciate it for what it is. It's a fantastic album. I think it's actually an essential listen for music fans. It is. And it actually is. We're especially going to be getting sure. into indie music. But yeah, it's just The Queen is Dead is fantastic. And that's really all I got to say is that it's, yeah, brilliant. But yeah, um, I mean, after that, they would release their last, their final uh, studio album. I think that at this point, 
uh, with such a short length in their career. Um, the Smiths, The Queen is Dead really cements itself as one of the most important albums in at least the 80s and the 90s, to be completely honest. Um, but in 1987, they would release their final studio album called Strange Ways, Here We Come. And Strange Ways, Here We Come is... Uh, it came it came out right after two compilations, uh The World Won't Listen and Louder Than Bombs, which came before that one on nineteen eighty seven. Um anything you guys wanna say about the World Won't Listen or Louder Than Them Bombs? I wanna read them together as uh I'm gonna go on par because they came out like uh the World Won't Listen came out on February and Louder on March. So uh, is there anything you guys wanna say about them? Yes, louder than bombs. I'll talk about that one. Go ahead, go ahead, so Captain Cook. For me, this is my favorite compilation album. Like for songs that are on Hateful and the other compilations album, I just go to here and I listen to it. Like from top to bottom, every song is fucking great for me. There might be one that I'll talk about later that's M, eh, but even that one I can chuckle at. I okay, okay. I, I, <laughs> we'll talk about it in a second. You better not but... say yeah, ooh. <laughs> This album and The Queen is Dead are probably my favorite Smith albums. And if, if if I were to give someone a Smith album, I think I'd give this one to start them off or The Queen is Dead, one of those. Because I think this one has an overall, like, what's the word for it? It has all the songs on there, pretty much. Like, their most famous ones, like... um where is the track listing here? <laughs> now I can't get my thoughts out, Gabe. See? Don't feel bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. You gave me the curse. Heaven knows I'm miserable now. William, it was really nothing. Girl Afraid. Like, there's stuff on, on Hateful of Hollow. And there's stuff on the other compilation albums as well. And new songs. All in one package. Like, this is the album to go to. If you're not going to start with a studio album, like, The Queen is Dead. The only song on here that's eh is Golden Lights. It's kind of cringy, but like I can listen to it and chuckle at it. And it's not even their song, so I can forgive them. It's a cover. It's not awful or anything where my ears are bleeding, but it's just like, mm, it's okay. Another thing is all the songs are really short and to the point, and it just makes them all so strong. They never overstay their welcome and they make you want more. I'd rather have a song be too short than too long where you're looking at how much is left in the song. But don't get me wrong. I love long songs. It's just it has to have changes throughout the songs to keep me listening. Tool does a good job in that and Pink Floyd does a good job in that too. They keep you engaged in their longer tracks and they layer throughout the tracks. I could go song by song, but I'm not going to torture you guys. Oh my I can, God, really I'm, I can <laughs> honestly do that with this album, but I'll spare you guys and I'll just <laughs> mention some quick things. I'm just going to give a quick mention to Sweet and Tender Hooligan and say that Morrissey's vocals are fucking awesome. When he yells, etc., I love that part so much. QRD also from like five hours ago. Yeah, yeah we that. were talking about that. I was just re listening to this album. Also, Mars playing and tone on here on these songs are fucking perfection, too. I think it's my favorite, like, poem that he has between this and The Queen is Dead. Um, Please, please, please let me get what I want. I think is the best balance between Morrissey and Mar. That's like, Morrissey song. comes in and Mar backs off. And then when Morrissey stops singing, Mar has something to say. They never overpower one of um, one another. They don't do that with a lot of songs. They don't overpower each other. But this one, you really notice that great balance between them both. And also, shout out to that Death Tones cover. If yes, you haven't listened oh my God, to that, so you should good. try it. It's really good. Mm -hmm. I can attest to but that yeah. as a fellow Death Tones fan and Smith fan. Yeah, you got to try it. It's good. Even if you don't like Death Tones, you can listen to that song and love it. Also re-listening to this album one more song that i want to mention is back to the old house like i didn't really appreciate it as much as i do after this listen i fucking love that song the vocals the guitar everything i love it 
I just love this album a lot. It's the best compilation album to me. And I think it can be next to The Queen is Dead for sure. Oh, damn. Um, uh, go ahead, Gary. What do you have to say about uh, either of both? Um, I'm going to talk about Louder Than Bombs. I think that um, I just have two things to say. I think that it. I agree that it's 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 a great way to get someone into the Smiths. Like, uh, it, I, I'm pretty sure I had this and Hatful of Hollow just for my dad's CDs, which is how I got into them, and I, I discovered a lot of songs. And um, the other thing I'm going to mention is that a song on here that's that I don't think is in, on any of their other albums that we're going to talk about, which is this. Um, I know Gabe's going to talk about that song more, but it's. Mm-hmm. Uh, I you know I I know you too well, man. But it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful like a uh, p- kind of piano ballad, which is an interesting change of instrumentation mm, yeah. for the band. But it, <laughs> it, it works really well in the song. Um, also, shout out to uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower. It's in that movie. It's oh movie. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I have to say. It's it's a good way to get someone into the band. I think that's a good that's a really good point. Nice, uh, Mint. What do you have to say about either? Louder than bombs, or the world will listen. I don't know if I can. Can anyone else hear him? Oh, no. no. All right, go ahead. All right, my fucking internet is just the fucking worst. Anyway, um. Yeah, I feel that, man. It's okay. I'm having same, I'm having issues today too. <laughs> go ahead. All right, you guys can hear me now. Though, yes, right? yes, yes. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Um. So one thing I did want to mention. I'm not going to talk about the world won't listen because it's basically the same as Louder Than yeah. Bombs. But I did want to say, in case anybody was confused, the world won't listen and Louder Than Bombs, they're basically, they serve the same purpose. The world won't listen was the comp for the UK and Louder Than Bombs was the comp for the US, in case you were wondering why they both came out around the same time and feature roughly the same amount of songs and the same song. Uh, so I definitely prefer Louder Than Bombs, for one. I think the cover is much better. It's just like an image of Sheila Delaney, which, of course, is one of Morrissey's uh, idols in the literary world, uh, wrote A Taste of Honey. Uh, great cover. Uh, I love all their covers, really, but this is actually one of my faves from them. And uh, two, I think it just has a better selection of songs like they have the same amount they have like roughly the same songs but uh louder than bombs adds a few more and i think the ones that they add they take some from hatful and stuff but i think it makes for a better listening experience this is not a perfect album there's definitely flaws with it but i think because it's a compilation and it feels more like a compilation than hatful does Apple definitely feels more like an album than this does. Uh, I can forgive it more. Uh, it's still great. There's still a ton of fantastic songs here. Uh, this also has some Peel sessions, but from a later Peel session, their last Peel session actually. Which also just shout out to John Peel. Shout out, shout out the goat. Shout out to John Peel. But uh, also. Yeah, it just has a lot. It you know it has also some non-album singles on here. You know, you get uh, "Shop with Losers of the World Unite" and like "Ask," mm. and, uh, "Panic" and stuff like that, and even some B-sides. Uh, the two singles that they released from 1987, "Shop with Losers of the World Unite" and "Sheila Take a Bow," I'm not entirely big on. I do like "Sheila Take a Bow" much better. I think it is actually a pretty cool track, you know, very catchy. Not the best song, though. It doesn't really, like, stand out much to me. It's kind of Smiths by the numbers. Uh, uh, Shocklifters of the World Unite, I'm actually kind of not that big on. It's like, okay. I think the good... I, would you call it a guitar solo? Maybe. A little bit. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's terrible. I think Johnny Moore has... Oh, I think ooh. he has no purpose playing, like, hard rock style guitar i think it does not suit him well at all it sounds terrible the guitar tone is terrible i hate the way it sounds i don't i mean i get that he was trying to venture off from more the jangly style of playing which i get but like it it doesn't work at all it kind of like 
is like the same issue I had with like Peter Buck and like the monster. But that's for another discussion. Uh, and I don't know how much hate I'll get for this because I know this is one of their more popular songs, but I, I'm not that big on Panic. Mm. I think it's the honestly the, the more I listen to it, the less I like it. Like it gets worse every listen for me. It's still at a point where I'd say it's like good, but I feel like if I listen to it more, I, I could honestly be at a point where I dislike it because honestly, I hate the message of this song. If you don't know, uh, this song is basically just like on the surface, it seems like you know it's anti like radio and stuff which I'm not entirely against that message, but if you see the stuff he was saying around this time, you know, he's basically talking about radio stations, like playing like sort of like, you know, pop, like let's say like Whitney Houston or something or like reggae, which, you know, Morrissey said was like shit or whatever. <laughs> it kind of comes off as racist. Like he kind of feels like he has a vendetta against black music and mm. doesn't think it's as substantial as the shit he was doing which I just hate. It's just a really, and you know, obviously what we find out about Morrissey later as a human being <laughs> does not oh, Jesus. into this. Uh, not trying to moralize. If you like the song, it's fine. But to me, it's like, and plus the children uh, chorus thing, that chorus is really corny. That hang the DJ shit, that is shit is so corny. Especially with the kids singing along, it's the corniest shit they've ever done. <laughs> Uh, and like it's a really bad message song honestly I don't know why I don't hate it like I could see, be at a point in my life where I hate the song but thankfully I'm not there yet it's still kind of cool I like what Johnny does on the guitar in this song uh, and however the other single from Post Queen is Dead uh, is Ask which I think is an incredible song. I actually love the message of this song, basically trying to overcome shyness, which I think is a really beautiful message. Because, uh, you know, it's very relatable, especially for Smiths fans at the time. There's a lot of them very introverted. I mean, still is today, but especially at that time. Very introverted people, very antisocial people. And, you know, for him to make a song with that message, you know, it resonates. Uh, so yeah, love that song. Johnny's playing on that song kind of has like a Hawaiian style to it, and I really love that. Uh, and there's a lot of other great songs in here. Uh, Half a Person, which was the B side of Shock Lifters of the World Unite, I think that's a great song. That's kind of becoming one of my favorites from them. It wasn't when I very first heard it, but over time. It just, like, becomes great, like, better. The lyrics are fantastic on that song. Really simple song, really effective song. Uh, Stretch Out and Wait and Unlovable, I think, are really underrated. I think those are really beautiful songs that I don't see a lot of people talking about. Uh, I don't know. a lot of. It's not even that they hate it. It's just, like, it never gets any mention. But I think it's really good. Uh, I think they're both really good. Uh, I won't talk about every song, but I will say that the only song the only song that Smith's ever made that I genuinely like hate, like I honestly hate this song, and it was a single from them, and I have no idea why they released it as a single, is a uh, Shakespeare's Sister. Mm. I genuinely think that song is awful. Uh, Morrissey, it's not even because Morrissey's sound like kind of doesn't, but I just don't really like what he does. I don't like the melody of this song. Uh, I don't like where this song goes. I don't know. I can't really describe why I can't stand it. It just sucks. Uh, Golden Lights, uh, kind of overhated. I mean, it's not a good song by any means, but like, it's not that bad. And I feel like more people should be hating on Shakespeare's sister than they do this song. <laughs> I digress from that. Uh, the version of Back to the Old House in this sound um, is much inferior. It's actually the B-side version. 
from what differences it make. Uh, it's still a good version, but I do not like the way the bass sounds on here. I much prefer the sort of solo acoustic guitar version on half full. Uh, but yeah, pretty much everything else is just fantastic. You know, of course, you got the half full tracks on here uh, that I won't get into, but that are great. Uh, rubber, I'm not huge on, but you know, the bass is really awesome on that song. Kind of has a really interesting progression to it. Cool song. But the one song I do want to mention, which is my second favorite Smith song, is Asleep. Yes! Which is actually the first Smith song that I ever listened to because of Perks of Being a Wallflower. Uh, which, Great movie. Yeah, shout out to the book and the movie. I actually read the book in school. Oh, I thought it was a book. Yeah, it's a good book too. Uh, yeah, just like, I don't know, it's kind of weird for that to be my first song rhythm, because like, it's a really powerful song, and it's it's so simplistic, too. It's just the piano, kind of like some bells in there as well, especially towards the end, and just Morrissey's voice, yet it has all the power in the world. It just destroys me every time I hear it. Uh, and I don't I, it's not even in a way that like I can fully describe what it does to me but it just like I don't know it, it kind of takes over my soul it's just, I don't know but yeah this is actually a really good compilation especially with the Hatful tracks being in there uh, some really great sort of extra songs and non-album singles and stuff it has its duds but the good outweighs the bad i actually think pretty much every smith's album and comp and stuff is like really good like they were never a band that made an even mediocre album honestly uh like i genuinely am really positive towards all of them some to a lesser extent and we'll get to that lesser extent in a second but uh yeah, really good. Really, really good comp. Uh, it was well, like a comp, but like the Smiths are kind of more so like a comp band anyway. Yeah. I think the Queen of the Dead is like the only like great album structure. Like the only time where it's like it's meant to be an album for me. And the closest to that would probably also be Need is Murder. But besides that, everything else feels like a collection of songs. Which I don't mind, you know. Great songs, but that's my thoughts on Modern Bombs. Yeah, I, I, I do certainly respect those takes. Uh, I do think that, yeah, uh, the Smiths work better as a single sort of compilation band than anything else. Uh, but yeah, uh, Gabe, what do you think about Louder Than Bombs or The World? Won't listen. So I'm gonna just focus on louder than bombs instead of the world won't listen because I have more to say and also because I don't really think I don't think there are some songs that are exclusive to world won't listen but they're like not super duper notable for me to dedicate time to both albums. Um, <laughs> um, so to start, I guess I should probably just fo- uh, put it out right out, right th- put it out there right off the bat. Louder than bombs is my second favorite Smiths album, uh, like in general. Just if we count everything kind of combined together it's my second favorite and it's the the second of two tens that i have for this band um it really depends but depending on the day this could end up being my favorite smith's like album um i really hold this and the self-titled to pretty much the same esteem uh at least personally this album is like really strangely important for me i don't know what i can't really pinpoint why but it's a very personal album for me and uh you know it's hard for me to kind of formulate just what i really love about it because i I think that even though it's just really a collection of singles and session material and b-sides that it manages to be its own collective entity that somehow manages to function better than some of their studio albums including yes the queen is dead ah damn um i would take this over most studio albums of theirs any day like no joke i I think i could probably just 
maybe I could live with just this album um, and their self-titled. Maybe. Well, we'll get to that, but maybe Strange Ways. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, though. Um, I think this is just a fantastic album, and it has my favorite Smith song on it, which, as everyone's been kind of leading up to at this point, uh, is Asleep. Um there will never be a song by the Smiths that tops that song for me. There will never be a song. Uh, I think that maybe really strikes me so personally as that one does. Uh, it's one of my favorite songs of all time, without a doubt. Uh, top, God, top 15, maybe. It's such an important song for me because it, you know, it, this song was one that I did turn to um, for some of my more uh, d- depressing days couple about a year and a half ago um i would listen to this song on repeat uh at sometimes at night and it would get me through the day sometimes because you know it's a it's a very melancholic song it's a suicidal song and i just it helped me kind of pour out my feelings a little bit um without doing anything irrational it's still one of my you know, my one of my favorite songs of all time. I think the piano on this song is just so beautiful. Minto put it best. It's very simple, but at the same time, I think that it's it, it, what it is supposed to be doing. It does incredibly well. I, I've never seen an album or a song, excuse me. I've never seen a song do so much with so little. Maybe only a few songs I can think of that really do that. It's just a piano, a couple of wind effects, and Morrissey's vocals. There's no bass, there's no drum, there's no this is not a conventional Smith song, and I think that's why it's so brilliant to me, is because it's so unconventional for them and in the way that it's delivering its message that I think it just kind of stands out. And that's why it attracted my attention at first, and that's why I think I was able to kind of open myself up to it um and have it become one of my favorite songs of all time, as well as my favorite Smith song. Some of the other songs on here that I really love, um, if I can, you know, scroll on my phone, get it down. Come on. It's not loading. If you'll just, just bear with me a second. <laughs> happens. Oh, did get. Oh, are we connected? Hello? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, okay, was I was I, was I I muted? I think my push to talk turned off. Ah, uh, don't worry. Um, You said, you were, scro- said? That you were scrolling looking for the other song? Okay, okay, so I got the song list up then. Okay, so I was, some of the songs I already listed off, I was like, She Will Take a Bow, which um, I didn't like it first, but I warmed up to because when I came back to the to Louder Than Bombs for this binge, I, I kind of grew an appreciation for it. It's not a song I listen to an absolute ton, um, but you know, it, it's one that I, I can really appreciate now. Panic as well, which you know, I know Minto just said was not one of his favorites, but I think it's one of my favorites. Um, again, it's a really good example of like a Smith's pop song. I want to say um, I, I don't really hate the corny parts of this. I, I, I kind of think it's fun. Um, you know, I mean, definitely putting into context the kind of things that Morrissey says and does now, and I guess was kind of going public with at that point, it's definitely a bit of a double-edged sword, you can kind of assume, just based off the lyrics. Um, the songs that come back from, like, Half Full of Hollow here are, of course, brilliant. I do think this is my preferred version of that album. Like, it, this is a perfect amalgamation of, uh, Half Full of Hollow and, um, The World Won't Listen. I think that if either of those albums, I'd listen to this one before. If I were to listen to anything, Hatful for anything, it would be for the, uh, it would be for the Peel Sessions. Um, but uh, for this album, like, you know, Ask, I, I really like Oscillate Wildly as well. That's a great song. Um, the version of Back to the Old House on here, I actually really like. I don't, I don't really um, understand the dislike for that one. Um, this, oh my God, this night has opened my eyes. Mm, that song yeah. is just incredible. Wow. Uh, that's probably my second favorite on the album besides Asleep. 
Um, but I think every song on here just, you know, really works uh, to its advantage. You know, I, I don't think there's a single terrible song on here. There are weaker ones than, than the others, but, you know, it's one of my... Well, I, honestly, it, it might take me some time to really reevaluate this, but it, it could really be one of my favorite albums of all time. And I know it was for a while, um, but I kind of turned all of the Smiths off except for the self-titled. I think Louder Than Bombs is still on my chart. I have to go back and check, but I can't really do that right now. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's just a fantastic album, and it's... I, I wouldn't really say it's essential for music fans, um, but I think if you're going to be a Smiths fan, and especially yeah, a fan it's of essential like, for fans of the Smiths of like indie pop songs as well. I think it's an essential compilation. I would actually, if you're a fan of the Smiths already, just based off something like Queen is Dead or something like that, I think this would be the comp that I would have someone listen to um, over something like Hatful of Hollow or uh, World World Listen. I think if you're going to, like, if you like Louder Than Bombs, you should listen to it. Or if you want, like, the Sessions material, listen like the, the, the Peel Sessions, um, the early Peel Sessions, I say listen to um, listen to Hatful Apollo. But besides that, I would recommend that Louder Than Bombs is the more cohesive compilation. And it contains, like, the highest moments of Hatful Apollo, with some exceptions for me. But yeah, besides that, um, I just, I really adore Louder Than Bombs. It's one of my favorite albums. It's my second favorite album by The Smiths. And it just really means a lot to me. Yeah. Um, I really don't have a lot to say about the compilations because mainly I need to re-listen to them before giving a solid opinion on them. But yeah, uh, after this, they, of course, before releasing their last album, they would release their live album, um, which is called Rank. Uh, that... I don't know if any of you guys have heard, but I think it's a, it's at the same time an essential listen for, um, for of course, uh, the Smiths fans. It starts with the Queen is Dead in a really great way. It has a bunch of their unconventional tracks that you wouldn't expect them to be on a live album like uh, Vicar and Tutu, and Ask, but uh, it's a good live album. I just can't define it as a good live album for any Smiths fans. Uh, have any of you listened to Rank? I mean, I'm a massive like Smith stan, so I've heard literally everything this band ever did. Uh, <laughs> so yes, I've heard it. It's pretty cool for what it is. Uh, a lot of people shit on it. A lot of people say it's like a terrible live album. I think it's pretty decent. Uh, not exactly the greatest. However, there is a, a bootleg Smiths uh, live album. I don't think any of you guys have heard it. I'm going to drop the Rate Your Music link in general. Because oh, yeah. I, I, think it's like... I think it's fantastic. Uh, but I'm putting it now. It's called Thank Your Lucky Stars. I sent that one that, isn't that the one that is bolded? Like the only bootleg that is bolded? Yeah, the bootleg live that's... It should be bolded because it's fantastic. The version of Please 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 Let Me Get What I Want on that is amazing. Uh, I say it almost rivals the studio version, and yet um, much better than Rank. Sounds much better than Rank, but Rank is still cool. Mm, yeah. But yeah. Um, so there you go. If you want to listen to live albums by The Smiths, to recommendations. Uh, and after that, they would release their final album and their final project in general. Uh, so Strange Ways, here we come. Which I think it's a solid goodbye for the band. A lot of people don't like it. I think it has a bunch of tracks that really are worth a listen to. Um, it ha it, it is certainly 35 minutes long. It's For as short as it is, it offers a lot within its sounds. It has a lot of good tracks uh, that I adore. Uh, uh, it has one of my favorite Smiths tracks called Last Night I Dreamt That Somebody Loved Me. That I really, really like. And uh, Paint a Vulgar Picture. The only thing that I don't like about this album are the last is the last stretch of Death at One's Elbow and I Won't Share You. I think, uh, talking about Smiths, this this has to be some of the weakest ways to that they ended any compilation or album. I do love the opener, A Rush and a Push and the Land is Ours. And uh, yeah, I just think it's a decent goodbye, a good, a good uh, last album, last effort by the band. But uh, yeah, so Captain, what do you think about uh, about a strange ways? Here we come. 
I actually, I like The Closer. I'll talk about that later, though. Uh This album is, I like it a lot, but it's probably the one I've listened to the least, which I don't understand. I love the songs on here, but I don't find myself coming to this album a lot. Maybe I listen to the songs, but I don't come and listen to the whole album top to bottom. Um, I love pretty much every song on here, except maybe Pain and Vulgar Picture and Death at One's Elbow. Don't get me wrong. I can listen to these songs, no problem. And I can find like enjoyment in it. But to me, they're definitely their weaker tracks on this album. My personal favorite, which I don't see many people talk about, is Death of the Disco Dancer. I fucking love that song. I had it stuck in my head when I first listened to this album. Um, Morrissey really carries that song in the first half and then he drops off and the band just takes over and it turns into like, how do I describe it? Like a beautiful chaos. That's how I would describe it. It just gets more abrasive. I love it. Um, I won't share you. I think I won't share you is a great end to the album and the end of the Smith's discography. It makes me sad when I think about the Smiths disbanding while I listen to the song. And another thing, what is the song really about? <laughs> what does Morrissey not want to share? Maybe he doesn't want to share his money. Cause during, after this time, they had a lot of dispute. Maybe, maybe <laughs> Mar's wife won't share Johnny Marr. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about this. We joke yeah. about this our dms like before the My, our joke is like maybe morrissey had a secret affair with uh mar because it really feels yeah. like that you could see it in the pictures and the interviews and stuff morrissey it's really like on spanish television yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, it's really something but jokes aside i i really like this song and it makes me sad thinking about the smith's disbanding when i listen to the song but yeah that's my overall take on it i don't really listen to it that much but the songs are he on here are pretty solid. Yeah. Um, Gary, what do you think about the last Smith's album? Okay. So Strange Ways here is I just fucked up my web browser. Hold on. Um Yeah, it's I think it's pretty good. I mean it's it's kinda like a lot of people say it's it's transitional. Like they're kind of trend they it would have been transitioning to a d- different sound, but the band broke up. Um I honestly don't like the sound here as much as I do on their most jangly albums, like on their on their debut or on Queen is Dead, when the when the jangly guitars really at the forefront a lot more. I think that that sound is a lot more um, representational of the Smiths, and it, it works a lot better with uh, the songwriting and Morrissey's vocals. But that's not to say this is a bad album. I think this is actually it's 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 consistent. It's good. Um, I do. I fucking love Death of a Disco Dancer. I'm, I'm glad Captain Cook shouted that track out. That's a beautiful yes, song. Yes, man, it's really good. It is. Um, Girlfriend in a Coma is awesome too. I also yes. love. Yeah. I also love uh, the closer. I won't share you. Um, Unhappy Birthday is cool too. Um, I actually listened to this album the, uh, on my birthday this year, and that song came up, and I was like, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you did it the day after. And you said thank oh, God. I did it was the day Robert. after, and I was like, thank God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I forgot about she that. Said, Thank God You're it's right. not my birthday. Oh my God, you remember that better than I do. Um, yeah, well, it was only like a week ago. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I actually did listen to this album very recently, but I think it's good. I, I don't think it's their best, but I think it's, 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 it. Oh damn! Yo, you go, Gary. What? Oh, yeah, I'm done. Did Did I cut out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end, you cut out. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just saying it's. I don't think it's their best, but it's it's a very solid album. I guess that's the right word for it. Solid, overall. But yeah. Um, yeah. Mint, what do you think about the last Smiths album? I'm not big on it. It's still good. I want to get that out the way. This is still a quality album. If like any other like group, well, I wouldn't say any other, but like if a terrible or like an average group released this, I can almost consider it a masterpiece. But for the Smiths, it's actually kind of weak. Like the same way you guys kind of feel about Meet is Murder, this is how I feel about this album. Except mm. I, I like it a little bit more than you guys like Meet is Murder. Uh, um, the thing is though, for one, 
I have to get this off the way. This album feels like this album feels like it wants to be the Queen is Dead so bad. Like it's trying its hardest to recreate that magic, and it just falls short. Like the songs aren't like they're well written. Like these songs are well written. I don't have like any complaints about their structure or anything. But I don't know. The effect is just not there for the most part. There are some really good songs in here. Uh, Death of a Disco Dancer is a really awesome song. Uh, Morrissey's vocals sound excellent on there. Uh, Girlfriend in a Coma. Uh, it's The thing is, I still love the song, but it's kind of like a panic situation where I, every time I listen to it, I kind of like it less, although it's nowhere near to the extreme of panic. Still an awesome song. And then my favorite song here, Stop Me If You Think You've Heard This One Before. Uh, excellent good. song. Uh, it has the sort of hard rock solo thing at the end, but it works a lot better. Um, I still don't think Johnny Marr should be playing that style of guitar playing, uh, but it works better. Uh, I really like the lyrics to paint a vulgar picture. But the thing is, I can list a bunch of the songs, and I pretty much like every song here. Well, not literally every song, because I'm not big on Death at One's Elbow, or even musically paint a vulgar picture. But the thing is, though, even the good songs here are not the Smiths' best songs. Like, I don't think there's a single song in this album I would even put in, in their top 30 songs, honestly. Uh, that sounds kind of harsh, but like it's true. I don't like I never return to this album. Like every time I think about it, I'm like, why can't I just be listening to The Queen is Dead instead? <laughs> like that al- that album does everything. I feel that. This album, that album does everything this is trying to do except better. And the strings are like worse, uh, are worse utilized here. And the production is probably their most dated sounding, which is weird. I would never use the word dated to describe the Smiths because because they didn't stick to trends of the time, they've aged amazingly. They sound so fresh. They really do. Like, uh, especially with a lot of groups, you know, being influenced by them, they've aged really well. But this album has some really dated 80s style production. Like, uh, I started something I couldn't finish with those horns. Like, you know, those honestly, those could fit on like a fucking like Huey Lewis song. Those horns. Uh, not as badly though it's still a, a good song i'd say but like and the strings on like la- last night i dreamt that somebody loved me kind of corny not really that great I, it's still a good song like the tune is good but like the strings like just have like no reason to be there it's just trying to recreate queen is dead like the strings on queen is dead except they're not as well utilized uh i won't share you does not work well as a closer at all it's it's a good song like i enjoy it but like why would they choose this to end the album like it makes no sense to me uh and honestly to and the thing is though i said earlier about meat is murder is that it's the opposite of this and what i mean by that is that with meat is murder Every member had a chance to shine and, you know, had its main, had a dominance on the album. But name me one interesting thing that Andy Rourke, Mike Joyce does, even Johnny Marr. Johnny Marr is pretty much absent on this album. Like, he has almost no dominance. Like, he's there, but, like, does he really do anything? Not is really. There any, Not really. Like, is there any part of his playing that's, like, interesting? that stands out that couldn't be done by a session player. I think this is the laziest Smiths album to be completely The thing is, though, this is the first Morrissey album. This is a Morrissey solo Mm, album. I could see that, for sure. This and Viva Hate are the same album. (laughs) Which are good albums, they're just not Smiths Yeah, I like Viva Hate, and I like this. It's just like, why are we calling this a Smiths album? The members have no dominance legit zero nobody no member besides morrissey does anything interesting that doesn't mean they don't do a good job they're just serviceable they just do their job they don't stand out and they just 
play their part to let Morrissey shine. I can see that now that you mentioned it. But yeah. Um, Gabe, what do you think about the last Smiths album? So I think uh, Strange Ways Here We Come is fairly underrated, actually. Uh, for a while, I wasn't really that huge on it. Like, I was just kind of, eh. I was like, it's okay. Um, but I actually came around on it, uh, I want to say sometime last year, just kind of casually. I was just like, well, you know what? I feel like I don't appreciate this one yet. Let me re-listen to it. And I realized that, similar to The Queen is Dead, I think this is definitely a bit more of a song-driven album for me. Um. I, I don't know. It's kind of confusing now that I'm kind of going back and thinking about The Queen is Dead and how it kind of works better as an album, but I just listen to songs more off of it. I think Strange Ways works definitely better as songs by itself. Like, I don't really think listening to this as just an album is all that appealing to me. Um, this is definitely one that I think has stronger songs and it does stronger sequencing. Uh, if that's That's like what I've been looking for this whole night. Like, Jesus Christ, that's what I was looking for for Queen is Dead, which doesn't describe it properly. Thank God I didn't say that. I would have been stupid. This album is definitely what I was going for with that. Uh, I love the intro. A rush and a push and a land is ours. Fantastic opener, and it's a great way to open up their last album. Um, I do really love Death of a Disco Dancer. My favorite song on here is Girlfriend in a Coma. Um, I started something I couldn't finish. It's great. You know, I'm kind of just backtracking. Now I'm looking at the track listing for once. Um, <laughs> I sort of something I couldn't finish is great, but it's not something that's super memorable for me. So I can't really kind of bring it up off the top of my head. Um, I think like the best patch of songs on here is from death of a disco dancer to, uh, last night I dreamt that somebody loved me. I love every single song in that four song stretch pretty much, excuse me, pretty much equally, uh, except for girlfriend in the coma, just kind of easily edges those out just a little bit. Um, the rest of the album, I think like the weakest, quote-unquote weakest stretch would be Unhappy Birthday to Death at One's Elbow. But I also agree with the the, the fact that I Won't Share You is a fantastic closer and that it's a pretty fitting send-off for the band. Um, for the, for a while, I thought that uh, Asleep was technically their last song. I thought that Strange Ways had predated uh, World Won't Listen, which made me think, you know, like technically going off of their album uh length whatever you want to call them going off their albums uh asleep would be their last song which i thought would be a far better send-off for them. oh yeah that would have been the greatest yeah that that would have been like the greatest way for them to end their career without a doubt now um but i think in general strange ways is a great way to, for them to end the uh discography uh it's not a terrible album it's one that i could actually see myself warming up to to like masterpiece status at some point because the only album that i don't really think is anywhere near that would be me just murder and even then it's only like half a point less from strange ways for me so it's it's again i said i don't think the, the smiths have a bad album uh and strange ways you know i think it could probably put it on the same level as the queen is dead at some point um and then have the smiths be my favorite studio album half full of hollow being like my second favorite compilation and then of course um louder having <clears throat> having louder than bombs is my favorite compilation so yeah um in general I think that's just kind of all I really have to say about Strange Ways Here We Come. I think it's a great send-off for the band. It's definitely more song-driven than it is album-driven. Uh, and I also think that the instrumentation on this album is also... You know, that it's been kind of mentioned before that it was a little bit... I don't know. It was a little dry or... Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think the instrumentation on here is great. I really love it. Um, yeah, I think it's a really solid album. Yeah, I think it's a good send-off for the band, actually, as well. Uh... It's not as good as it could have been, but uh, I do appreciate it for what it is. And what it is, it's a really like nice goodbye from a band that really had a, one of the greatest careers, to be completely honest. I, I, really, I wouldn't see them as of one of my yes. favorites, but I respect them. So with that, we come to an end of uh, the Smith's discography. It's surprisingly that it's taken us almost two hours and a half to cover all their albums. Uh, but yeah. Um, so thank you everyone that uh soup and sweat had to leave uh soup had not um charged his uh earbuds so he couldn't hear us and um sweat just had to leave um uh, so thank you captain thank you gary thank you Minton, thank you gabe for being part of uh this episode of music buddies you're welcome man and yeah. thank you everyone thank for you listening for so yeah mm, have a good night